Welcome to the Merch Super Show. I didn't know how excited I was going to be for tonight. Suffice to say that I'm a little bit more dressed up. That tonight is... I'm not really sure what to call tonight. Do we call it a celebration? Do we call it a pity party? Because ultimately, we bore witness to the worst result in reality television that I have ever seen in 12 years. The biggest miscarriage, the biggest Mertz carriage of justice in reality TV history. A 6 to 1 vote is absolutely disgusting. It is repulsive. It keeps me up at night. I don't understand what happened. Um, we are going to break down what happened. I am going to ask Dan Giesling the tough questions. I am going to ask him why, oh why, did you want to take Ian instead of Danielle? I know that that's the big question that everybody has. We are going to get to the answer tonight because I know that you were keeping up with all of Dan's post-show interviews and he kept saying that even now he still defends taking Ian, uh, which I think is going to be very interesting. You know, I think that there's no real doubt that Dan was the most intuitive player, the player that could read the other people the best. And I feel like that was the only mistake that he made. Uh, and I'm interested to see what his thoughts were on that. Now, just to give you a little bit of a breakdown as to how tonight's going to work, it's going to be a very big evening. There's going to be a lot of surprises. Uh, we're going to get right into it. We're going to have Dan Giesling, my co-host, Mike Kelly, although that would mean I'm Michael Strahan, and I hate Michael Strahan, so I prefer to be called the Brown Regis. Uh, we're going to have Sue Giesling. We are going to have Kelly Giesling. We are going to have Memphis Garrett. And... If everything goes according to plan, we are going to have some big surprises. Now, I know that Vocal just upgraded their system, so hopefully this all goes down without a hitch. Let's start with Chelsea. Wait, hang on. There we go. Chelsea. Hi, Mertz. Can you believe we're finally here? I know. I've missed you. Now... I, well, okay, well, the, the first thing is, wh where are you? Like, I, this is not the room that I'm used to seeing. You know, we usually do the shows from Memphis's club inside your house. I'm in the office. Well, I mean, we have to do this the way we do all the shows, like we did every week. Can you, can you like, can you indulge me? Can you go back to Memphis's club? It hurts anything for you. I'll move to Memphis's club. Okay. okay, we're going to Memphis's club. I'm taking a stroll right now. I feel like I'm in a Dan YouTube video right now. <laughs> Mert, you look snazzy in that sweater. I'm dressed up. I'm dressed up a little bit, yes. All right. Oh, I'm so excited. Good. I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to see this. We're almost there, and he... What's going on, man? What's going on? <laughs> uh, Dan, do you just live in Memphis's club? Yeah. In his club? This is what Mert calls because it looks like a club. Yeah, we're right, club. okay, because I like the... I, it was funny, because when Chelsea first did the show when you were gone, I kept saying, what's with the lighting in there? I'm like, it looks like you're in one of Memphis's clubs. And she's like, I can move to another room. So then she moves to another room, and I'm like, no, 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 go back to the club. I like it in the club. It makes me feel like I'm at Greystone. Yeah. We had a good time at Greystone, man. It's nice to sit down and actually talk with you about some in-depth reality stuff, because, you know, not a lot of people, I think, have an appreciation for the actual movements and strategy behind reality TV like yourself. I, you know, before we get into everything, I just want to let you know, I really enjoyed, you know, that private. Oh, wait, he's a little bit, he's a little bit frozen for me. Am I, whoa. Okay, who's it frozen for? Uno momento. We will figure this out. Like I said, I knew that we were going to have some, uh, okay, wait, they'll be right back, I'm sure. I, you guys can still see me, right? Okay, don't worry. I will bring him right back. Yeah, I think they just got kicked because uh, they're not in the room. They'll be right back, I'm sure. Um, I just hope this doesn't affect. We have, we have a very, like, tight... We have so many things planned. It's going to be awesome. Tell me what you guys think. Do you think that the right decision was reached? How do you explain that jury vote while we wait for Dan and Chelsea to come back? Oh, there they are. Okay. Should be popping back up momentarily. 
Sorry, Mark. There we go. That's okay. That's okay. Believe me, that's going to happen a lot tonight. We've got a lot of we got a lot of moving parts. So, where I was was that I wanted to. I guess we were talking about Memphis's club, and yes, Dan, I I almost don't even want to talk about it because yeah, it's no. really hurting me that we're not there right now. It's a Saturday night. We both know that place is popping right now, and I'm very depressed because I feel like life will not get any better than that night. <laughs> the, the, for those guys, obviously you guys weren't there, but there's confetti falling from the ceiling, and you know there's people dancing, uh, you know, from ropes, and uh, Merch just kind of looks at me and, and is like, "Is this real life? I mean, do people actually <laughs> live like this?" And I kind of look at Memphis, and I'm like, "This is how Memphis lives. This isn't how Merch and I live, but this is how Memphis lives every day." That's what you said to Ian, Dan. That was ask Chelsea. When you said that on the live feeds, I literally called Kelly and Chelsea right now, and I'm like, this is the greatest thing Dan's ever going to do on this show. It's like when you look at Ian, and you're like, man, Memphis is going to hook it up. Guys like us, we don't belong at Greystone. And I was, liter I was literally crying with laughter. Yeah. Um, okay, let's get into it, Dan. I know everybody's already way wanting me to start asking with the tough question. So what do you feel like? was the toughest part of the game for you? Was it when Frank won HOH and you had to do the funeral, or was it near the end game where you had to make a decision about who to bring? Well, you know, to be honest, the entire season was a, a complete grind for me because last time I played in season 10, one or two people wanted me out. This season, everyone but one or two people wanted me out, so I was constantly fighting things off, and I, I think the biggest struggle for me is that People really felt that I slept soundly every night, but I really didn't. My, like, my brain literally never shut off. And in season 10, I was able to shut it off a little bit. And, and it was just, really, it was just a constant grind every single day. And, and really, the hardest part for me was the end game. You know, when we're at day 70 or 71, and there's only three people left, and the only thing we have left to do is the second part or the third part of the HOH. And there's, like, four down days. And, like, last time... It was Memphis and I in the house. We knew we each won 50K. There wasn't a live jury. We didn't have to vote a third person out. And it was just those last couple days were an absolute grind for me. Um, I'm being told, Dan, that people want you to speak up a little bit from the room. Also, while we get to that, if you could just do the quick Mert sign uh, so we can take our screenshot. Chelsea is well familiar with this. She does it almost on a daily basis. Five, four. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, Dan, tell me about tell me about this Danielle. You know, like while you were in the house, Danielle got a lot of the attention. You know, like is she for real? Is she really that clueless? And I looked at her and I'm like, a player like Dan is just going to eat this girl alive. Um, is that how you saw her? Did you see her as somebody that like was literally tailor made to take to the end? Well, the thing about Danielle is that from day one, and I told her this. She was like, when I was setting up my drafting, is that, you hear that static? Or is that, okay. From day one, um, you know, I was going through my head how I was going to draft. You know, I was looking at a couple people, but from the first moment I was in the house, Danielle came up to me and said, I want to play for you really intensely multiple times. And to me, it's kind of like football. You know, sometimes you can reach and take a super talented player, or you can take someone you think is going to be pretty good, but they're going to be loyal to you, and they really want to play for you, and they want to be coached up. And to me, my strategy was to draft people that were willing to, to become better and maybe take criticism and also push back a little bit. And I saw Danielle as someone who really wanted to learn and get better in the game, so I rolled the dice and took her. And really that kind of helped me later on in the game because, you know, we had a player-coach relationship, and, you know, that, that bond was formed early on. You know, so in the end, she really trusted me because, you know, up until that point, you know, I was really kind of working to get her towards the end as best as I could. Um, Chelsea, do you have any questions for Dan? I don't want to, like, Dom or Snate all of his time. <laughs> I asked all of them already, but, hmm. Have you watched all of our Mertz interviews that I, we've done? I have not. I haven't. I saw what it is. I found the one with Memphis and just jumped to the Memphis part real quick because, no offense, I get to talk to you every day. Um, and just, just to see what Memphis said on a couple occasions and, you know, I watched it for about a minute. It was pretty cool. But Mertz, you know, I did one of your first shows, and I went on your website, and you have like a pages and pages and pages of shows, and that's awesome to see that that things are going so well for the show. I, I didn't. I mean, the the funny thing is, Dan, that like Chelsea is actually in most of those ones that you see on the website. I, I don't. The funny thing is, you never even like introduced us. I I don't even Chelsea. How did that all go down? I don't even understand. I don't even remember. Actually, is a better way. How 
Kelly, Kelly texted me and was like, are you willing to do this interview? And I looked on your website and I saw that Dan had done one. So I'm like, sure. <laughs> you know, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Chelsea. You know, this is, this is a night where we let all the skeletons out of the closet. Um, I, I had a lot of reservations about having you on the show. I was like, listen, Kelly, you're, you're like good TV, okay? You're like snarky and like, I'm not sure about this Chelsea. If she's married to Dan, she's probably like a big religious girl. She probably drinks milk every morning. You know, she probably like rolls bundles of hay and cooks apple pies all the time. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that's a big misconception about you? Um, I mean, I don't think a lot of people think that about me. Maybe when they just hear about me, but once they meet me, I don't think anybody really thinks that. Do you agree, Mertz? I, I do. I do. I do. Now, Chelsea, I wanted to ask you, what did you think Dan's best move in the game was? Do you feel like it was the funeral? Do you feel like it was just the 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 way you handled Danielle, I just feel like, was absolute mastery? So that's what it is for me. I think it was the handling of Danielle. Um, Chelsea, what do you think it was? Yeah, I think the handling of Danielle was pretty awesome, and of obviously, you guys know, from the, the post-funeral interview in bed, I really loved that move, too. Um, now, I guess the, the thing that people are talking about now, you know, I know that you're a football coach, Dan, and so, like, if we're doing the Monday morning quarterbacking, I think it ultimately all comes down to Dan. I remember when you were in the house, you probably, you obviously didn't see Dr. Will's interview, but Dr. Will called Ian to win right from the very beginning. And that's kind of like how I saw it too. I felt like, you know, we've got this like feel bad for him kind of kid who really needs the money. I didn't want him to get anywhere near the final four because I figured this guy was a shoe in to win. Can you just tell me a little bit more about why you were so insistent to not only bring Dan into the, or sorry, to bring Ian into the quack pack, and even in the quack pack, why was he not the first to go? Yeah. Well, first off, I think, you know, just from what I've seen, I think I'm pretty hard-pressed to find a former winner for a big brother that actually wanted me to win. I kind of I kind of find that pretty funny. Um, but to, to answer your question, you know, when we, we were looking for a fifth vote that we could just bring someone in that we could trust. And at that point, you know, we saw how Ian was kind of mishandled by Boogie and, and just kind of pushed off to the side. And, you know, essentially he was our fifth a vote in our insurance policy. And when, when we brought him up and we, we tied him in, Ian was not a good liar in the house. So, you know, when he said he was going to do what he was going to do, we actually believed him. And even towards the end, like, when he lied, he got very jittery, much like you saw in some situations. And he was really easy to read on that point. But on the same time, he was also very loyal. You know, but to answer your question, um, you know, obviously I knew bringing him to the end was pretty dangerous. Um, because it's just like you said, take strategy, take everything out, and just take a, a snapshot of me sitting next to Ian. You have a 29-year-old guy wearing a suit, uh, a black shirt. You know, I've had some, some success in my life, and you have this kid in a wrinkled Eddie Bauer shirt, khakis, you know, Sperry's on, and, he, and he's, a, he's a sympathetic figure. Just off that alone, you know, he, he had the upper hand. And, um, you know, I, I tip my hat to him, and, and he did a great job in the speech. And, and to me, when, I, when things got down to the wire, I just wanted to ensure my spot in the final two because I thought maybe in that 90 seconds I could scrape together four votes. I knew I wasn't going to get all seven, but I was really counting on Danielle and Jen. And really when I didn't have Jen, you know, it, it was kind of the nail in the coffin for me because I thought I could have talked Frank into voting for me because he was such a fan of the game. And when you see fans of the game and, and people who play the game hard, you would think, you know, that they would kind of reward that. But once again, it's a miscalculation on my part. Was there was there any one vote that went against you? You know, obviously from the six who voted against you, was there any one that kind of like hurt you the most? I feel like Jen's really caught me off guard. Yeah, you know, and people have talked to me a lot about this, and everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, I saw the episode, and Brittany was gonna vote for you, and what happened?" And you know, I tell people that's the magic of TV because I knew Brittany was the one vote I couldn't count on because her and Ian, you know, were like this; they were inseparable, and I was okay with that. You know, she was loyal to him to the end. You know, but really, just like I said, Jen, Jen and I had a great relationship in the house, you know, strategically and on a personal level. You know, we shared a lot of stories together. I really enjoyed her company, and she didn't like Ian. You know, she didn't respect the way he played the game. She just, she didn't enjoy being around him at that time in the house. So I figured that was a shoe-in for me in getting that vote. 
and you know really when I didn't have it it didn't hurt me it just surprised me and and I knew I was gonna have an uphill battle trying to win this game twice you know my ultimate goal when I walked in there was like all right I want to take Mike Boogie to the end because they got to pick one win winner to give it to then after that my goal was to take me Jen and Danielle to the end and then I, I'd love to be sitting next in, in the final two with Jen you know but obviously that didn't work out and and so I just wanted to make sure I got to the final two any way I could and, and kind of guarantee that and that's what that's the thing, you know, people say, well, why, did you, why didn't you cut Ian instead of Shane at the Final Four? Because I knew for a fact Ian was going to take me and that Danielle was going to take me. So I, I cemented my seat in the Final Two. If I take Shane, he's not taking me. And if Danielle wins, I'm kind of rolling the dice. I felt like she would have taken me, but I couldn't be for certain. I knew for certain Danielle would not have taken Ian. Do you, do you feel like that was the reason why you decided to turn on Janelle. I mean, obviously, you know, I think that Janelle made a lot of mistakes in her game. Do you think that the reason you were sort of prompted to go with the Silent Six was this need to align with Boogie since he was probably the only one you could beat? And did that influence you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I haven't seen the episodes, but the time and time again, I tried to either calm Boogie down or bring him in because I knew I needed him. You know, I, I saw him, you know, as a you know, you saw how he played season seven. He was, he was awesome. You know, but in this season, he, he got real emotional because things didn't always go his way. And I, I always just wanted to let him know that outside of all these moves I was making maybe to try to get Frank out of the house, I still wanted to work with him. I, I did it so much where, you know, when we made Danielle's nominations, I made sure Boogie wasn't up. And it just didn't really click. And, and I think, you know, he the thing about Boogie he's, is he's loyal to a fault. And, and when Frank had that loyalty... It was something I couldn't break up. The, the sad part for me was that I really wanted to work with Janelle. I loved her as a player, you know, as a fan. And just, I mean, she had strengths where I had weaknesses. She could dominate competitions whenever she wanted, you know, but it, it just it didn't work out. And at the same time, you got a chance to take out a great player like Janelle and not really hurt yourself in the process. You know, you kind of had to do it. But I didn't want to do that. I just know I couldn't, at that point, I couldn't talk six other people into keeping Janelle. It just... You know, I, I floated the idea a little bit, and I saw I was going to get shot down. I mean, you saw time and time again, I tried to bring the coaches together. And it just, it, it was like bringing Boogie and Janelle together was like oil and water. No matter what I did or what I said, it, it just wouldn't happen. Um, Chelsea, how did you feel when Dan sort of, uh, I'm not going to say he twisted the knife in Janelle's back, but certainly um, he didn't really do a lot to throw her a life preserver as she was sinking. Well, I know before Dan left, he said that if Janelle happened to be on the show, he would want to work with her. And you heard the last time when Sue and Kelly were on how much they love Janelle and Dan's dad loves Janelle. So I was just thinking about it from that standpoint, thinking, you know, I know Dan wants to work with her and, you know, he must really have tried and just not been able to make it work with his game in mind you know, still protecting that. So I knew he was probably disappointed deep down when I saw that go down. I, I just feel like, you know, I got to be honest with you, Dan, you know that I'm a straight shooter and I absolutely loved watching the season. You know, if you had told me that Chelsea Geesling was going to do more merch shows than any other guests that I've had combined before the season started, I would have said you were crazy. Um, and I, I just I keep going back to that to that final decision. Now, I know that you've already gone on the record as saying that you did not throw part three of the HOH. And I think that that's basically what I'm the most fascinated by. So you're telling me that even if you had won part three, you would have still taken Ian. Can you just elaborate even a little bit more about that decision? Definitely. You know, I didn't throw the fi final part of the HOH. I just flat out got beat, you know. The, where it really started to go downhill for me is, and this is vivid in my mind, is when Julie was reading off Brittany's question. And I knew Brittany hated the name Quack Pack, but if I look back at the semantics and how Julie said it, I believe Julie said the word like. Like Brittany said, well, I don't really like saying the word Quack Pack like a thousand times. Well, Brittany doesn't talk like that. Brittany's very well-spoken, very intelligent, so that should have tipped me off right there. Um, but from there, you know, I, I kind of lost control of that competition. But to elaborate on why... I would have taken Ian is because Ian and I, with the information we had in the house, were convinced that Danielle would mm -hmm. bop us in votes because she was such a likable figure. Now, 2020, you know, hi, uh, hindsight's 2020, you know, there's been, a, you know, I've understood that people didn't respect her game as much, but I still feel I don't have any regrets because had I won that HOH, I still would have taken Ian 
and I had a I had an uh, eviction speech planned for Danielle too, but I, I was just a little disappointed I didn't get to use. Then you would have lost her and Shane's vote though, wouldn't you have? And those are two votes I feel like you really needed. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, I I, I played the game so hard. I stacked up so many bodies. To me, it's like if I would I wouldn't have had a problem doing it at the end because you know I saw something in LA. I, I forget what it was. Some sign, and it says. You can't go 50% gangster. I was going 100% gangster, and that's the road I decided to take because it was the only road that would get me to the final two. So I could only hope that people would respect the fact that I found a way to get to the final two when there's no way, you know, someone like me, someone a dangerous player like me should have been anywhere near the final two. I will, I will never, I mean, you, you call, you even saying the word gangster, I feel, is like blasphemy, and that's what I think uh, makes it so funny. There were two things that came up during the season uh, that I feel are, like, worth noting. The first is, well, you know, Dan played a great game. And I know, Chelsea, you and I talked about – I know I asked you this question about four times a show. But the first point is Dan had a pass, you know. He didn't really have to compete like everybody else did when he was a coach, you know. And so when you compare Dan versus Will – Will had to compete the whole way through twice, whereas Dan got a free month, basically. And I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Me or Chelsea? Um, you, you. Oh, okay. So just that you're saying in comparison to All-Stars to season 14? Yeah, I'm just saying, do you feel like you had a pass when you were a coach because you had no threat of being evicted? And so people say that you didn't play an overall game. You had a free month. You know, not necessarily because, in my opinion... Um, I went in there and my biggest fear actually came true, which was that the target on my back extended to my players. So yeah, we lost Jody, you know, as a casualty of war because we lost that competition, but there was no reason whatsoever to have Kara leave that house. She was non-threatening. She wasn't, you know, a huge physical competitor. She did awesome in that, in that bed challenge. She was super well liked, but she didn't do anything to, to really ruffle any feathers. And I feel like Kara, and that, that was my, one of my biggest disappointments of the season was the fact that when she left, I was crushed because I felt as a coach, I let her down because, you know, my target extended to her, you know, and you talk about the comparison to All-Stars. Well, in All-Stars, everyone had already played once, you know, and the fact that only four of us had played, you know, people wanted to get us out. And it's just, you know, for me, it's just really the fight that I had to fight being a former winner and people knew how I was going to play, you know, Obviously, I can't compare it to being an all-star season. And, you know, you, you know how I feel about Dr. Will. He pulled off some magni magnificent moves, you know. But at the same time, you know, I, I've never been evicted from this game. And it's it's something that I really take pride in. And, and I shouldn't because I, I try not to be outspoken about But, Mertz, I love this game. And the fact that when I entered this, this season, I'm like, I'm definitely in some trouble. You know, I, I honestly, I didn't think I would make it as far as I did because I thought people would pick up on it, especially someone like Frank because he's such a fan of the game. And he wasn't – I didn't really consider him a newbie because he knew what he was doing in terms of competitions. He knew, you know, when we saw something came up when we had to study, he knew what it was, what it was for. You know, there were some people in the house that, that didn't understand the competitions or had to figure it out as we went on. But Frank, you know, I always held him the higher light because I knew how much he loved the game and, he, and we share that same passion. You know, so to really kind of wrap things up, it's like, you know, it's like comparing apples to oranges. You know, if you put me in a house with all people that had played the, the game before, you know, would that have helped or hurt me? Would people want to work with me or would they want to get me out? You know, especially under the pretense of how I played the game in Season 10. I was a pretty loyal person in Season 10. You know, would that be an asset to people as opposed to, you know, being threatening? Now, I think now if you throw me in a house with people that have been in the game before in another all-star type season, I'm in trouble. You know, because they've seen both sides. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I don't even think it would be a good idea for you to play again, which I'm sure is what you're thinking too. Yeah, you know, for me, it's like this season was very, very difficult. Um, it's obviously being married. It's, you know, there's a whole other personal aspect to it. And, and uh, you know, I was texting with Dr. Will. I said, you know what, um, I'm retiring my jersey. You know, if they decide to hang it up in the rafters next year, I'm honored. If not, you know, I, I feel like I've proven everything I, I had to prove in this game. Do you do you feel like do you feel like this season was you know the other thing that I hear about this season is you know Dan had an easy road it was kind of like Boston Rob on Redemption Island because he wasn't playing with the smartest crew you know you had like Shane there and you had Danielle there and you had Ashley there and Jen there and Joe there you know like he was playing you know it's basically like you were Bobby Fisher and you were playing with Grimace. I, I... 
I don't know if I'd compare that, but that's an interesting analogy. But at the same time, Bobby Fischer still has to move the pieces, and he still has to work. You know, it's not like these people weren't falling into my lap. You know, they were intelligent people. They may not be edited that way. I don't know. But, I mean, I had to work. And, it, like I said, it wasn't easy for me. It was a constant grind. You know, especially when I think back to heading into solitary confinement. Every single person in that house wanted me out, and they were okay with it. And, you know, that's not Bobby. That's putting myself in checkmate, you know, but I kind of just – flip the board upside down and let the pieces go flying. I just, you know, I, I, it's funny that people say that and I'm flattered, but it wasn't that easy. See, I will take a quick question. We have so many of them. Um, would you two consider doing the amazing race together? Callie and Chelsea? That question is Callie and Chelsea. Um, yeah, I, maybe they're waiting for Chelsea to get here. What about you and Dan? Would you consider doing the amazing race together? Um, I think Dan might be reality showed out yeah. for a while. <laughs> my, jer my jersey's done. Um, what are your top three moments from the Big Brother house? Um, top three moments. Wow. One of my favorite moments of all time, and this is the only one I can think of off the top of my head, is me and Ian were playing chess, and, and he mouthed this word to me. It, we had talked about it earlier, like 11 o'clock in the morning. We're playing chess at like 10 o'clock at night. He mouthed the word fire to me, and I knew exactly what we were talking about because we hatched this scheme because when Willie left, he, um, he left a can of Axe spray deodorant, and really there's no aerosol in the house. So there's a, we had an aerosol can, and in the backyard there's a, uh, you know, that fire pit with one of those long – we only had a Bic lighter at the time. So he, he mouthed the word fire, didn't say it. We both get up, sprint down to the base, to the lower level. He's looking for the Axe. I get the fire. Big Brother starts going nuts. I'm sure they cut the feed. But, you know, they didn't, we didn't even say anything, and Big Brother knew what we were doing. They started yelling at us to stop, yelling at us to stop. He gets the spray can out. I start lighting the bick, and we're about to launch the first ever fireball in the Big Brother house. And then a producer comes on over the loudspeakers just panting because the way the control room's set up is they have to run up the stairs to tell us to stop doing something. And, you know, as opposed to, like, a Big Brother wave that they just – or audio file they play over and over. Sometimes they come over and, and talk directly to us. But to do that, they got to sprint up two flights of stairs. So one of the sweeter or nice uh, DR producers came on. is completely out of breath. And she's like, you guys – cannot do this and me and Ian just kind of look at each other like we're doing this you know but it was just to me that's like that's the fun I have in the house is I, I get to hang out with a 21 year old kid and I get to act like I'm 15 and there's no consequence for it um now I've got this question a lot a lot of people have asked this one um what's your relationship with Danielle and Shane like now um uh, you know you really have to talk to them you know I, I've reached out to Danielle via Twitter and and and, and and time heals all wounds, and I think eventually things are going to come come around. But, you know, Shane and I, you know, you were there, Mertz, when we went to – we were at Greystone Manor. Shane and I had a nice talk. Um, you know, he yeah. seemed to kind of understand everything, and, and I thought we kind of patched things up. Uh, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the way I played the game, I definitely know I, I ticked off some people. But I hope at the end of the day, you know, people, you know, come around and, and know that I'm not a bad guy. And, and that, you know, there's if there's anything I can do to help them, you know, I will because it's decompressing from that house is, is not an easy thing. For me right now, it's a lot easier because I've already been through it. But, you know, even this time, when right. I came up in and season 10, there was no Twitter. There well, wasn't, well, I mean, you're touching right on it. Do you feel like it's easier for you to not look at it so personally because you've played before? Is that why they're taking it so personally because they don't have that experience? Well, possibly, but even the first time it came out, I felt the same way. Like, I went in there, I, I checked everything at the door, and I just played hard. You know, I, I walked out of there not, you know, playing as hard as I could but the thing that's I think makes it more difficult for everyone now is the fact that there's a pulse that you can feel every single moment of the day and that's via Twitter someone can reach out to you right now and if they didn't like you they're gonna let you know and, and whether that's right wrong or indifferent it's a real thing and and I never had to deal with that in the past and you know I made a statement on Twitter that I would respond to everyone and I do my best to do that but it, it becomes a point where it's overwhelming and, and you know I take a, a lot the people that support me, I really, really appreciate it. And I feel like if someone takes the time to tweet me, the least I can do is respond. But it's, it's like a massive tidal wave, and I just try to keep up with it. And, I, and for the feedback for me, it's been generally positive. If it was the other way around where, you know, it's more a lot, a lot of negativity, that's going to be tough to deal with, and, you know, especially for someone that this is their first rodeo. I'm just uh, I'm working on getting Memphis in here, so bear with me while I do that. I will put through another question. 
Um, who was the most disappointed that you didn't win? Uh, was it you, Chelsea, your family, fans? I'm going to say probably the most disappointed was Cindy at Twitter because that's what she said in parentheses. But honestly, <laughs> my, my family um, was not disappointed. My family, they're just, everyone's really proud of me, and that feels good because – when I came off, you know, I just went looked at Chelsea and said, "Is everything okay? Or are you happy with the way I played?" And and you know, my family is a huge are huge fans of Big Brother, and they look at me and they're like, "How did you even get that far?" You know, to me, they were just as amazed that I was that I was able to last long. And and I I, th I think the hard part for me is that you know we talk about Twitter when people send me a tweet and say, "Hey Dan, you know, you're so close. You played a great game. I would have voted for you." I just feel like I let let a lot of people down that supported me. You know. I, to me, I, I take that very seriously because, you know, I was rooting for people to win. I was rooting for Dr. Will to win a second time. And it, when it didn't happen, I, like for me, I felt like I just let a lot of, you know, the supporters down. And that's kind of what bothered me. But, you know, I, I played as hard as I could, and there's nothing I would have changed. Mertz, I think you were the most disappointed. Um, really? Yeah, like what was that like when you came back? Like what was the first thing you told Chelsea? Were you like, man, so close and yet so far? I was just happy to make it that far, you know, it just, to me, it's like, I got through the game once without getting voted out and never having a vote cast against me, and I did the same thing the second time around, it's like, even in my, Mertz, the first time, it was my wildest dream come true in season 10, and the second time, to me, it's like, I almost cherish season 14 more, because it was so much more difficult, you know, and it's just, I just feel like my dreams come through twice. Um, Memphis is telling me that he's got the color wheel of death on his Mac, so we're trying to get him on here. Which I know all you Mac users know exactly what he's talking about. But I will say one thing. Mike. And I'm really hoping. When, God, uh, yes. We talked about it, you know, at Greystone Manor, and uh, you know, I told you I didn't retweet it. I love that you keep saying it, Dan. Have you read that? Have you read the Mertz Handbook? Like, the more you say Greystone Manor, the more happy I will be during this interview. <laughs> But we're so we're at Greystone Manor talking about Greystone <laughs> Manor. But um, you know, you you asked me if I read the article that you wrote, and and I did. And you know, coming from you, like you, and people understand this. You're not a fan, Mertz. You're the leading expert in reality TV. You know, we had that conversation. You know, about just different players from not even Big Brother, just from everything. And and like I, that's when I got cut off. Is I really enjoyed that conversation because. You know, you're not just someone who reads the press clippings or watches the, you know, the episodes and doesn't look deeper into it. You know, so when I when I read that article that you wrote, you know, it really meant a lot to me because I know that you didn't write that off the seat of your pants. You really, I mean, you invest your heart into that, and and I really appreciate that coming from you know someone like you who your whole your 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 being your career is is taking pride in reality TV. Well, the thing is, the, the thing is, Dan, and thanks for that. The thing is, like, I wrote that literally seconds after I'd seen the finale and like you know meeting Ian I do feel like I feel like I might have been a little vicious but I feel like that's kind of like when you do your best work you know it's kind of like what is that gut sort of like reaction I mean now that I've had time to process it and now that like a, you know obviously a few days have gone by do I feel like Ian played a good game yes he definitely played a good game but I feel like when he is up against probably one of the most perfect games ever I feel like that definitely is taking attention away from the good game that he played. You know what I mean? Like, if this was another season, maybe we'd all be pulling for Ian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he played a solid game. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I think back to the jury speeches, and, you know, there's a, there's, you can change everything. But I guess it's like, you know, and I'm not comparing myself to any NBA players, but if someone drops 70 points in an NBA game and loses – you know, versus a guy who, who won a championship and maybe got a double-double, 10 points, 10 rebounds, played a solid game, 10 assists, you know, a triple-double. You know, it's like they both played good games, and it is it is what it is. You know, there's – for me, for me, I take credit in the fact that, you know, I either over or underestimated the jury or didn't calculate it the right way, and, and he did what he had to do when he had to do it, and, and he won, you know. So he, he played a solid game, and, and I don't think anyone can take that away from him. Uh, we're still working on getting Memphis in here who is having computer issues. Uh, let's see. Let's take this. Dan, before the finale, whose jury vote did you think you had for sure? You know, um, I was, uh, as things went down with Danielle, I thought she was the one locked vote that I had. But even as I saw things unfolding before my eyes and I couldn't, couldn't flat out tell Danielle that I wasn't going to take her, you know, because Ian's like, oh, my gosh, you really weren't going to take me. 
And I didn't tell him until after the votes were locked in. I'm like, dude, I was going to take you. I've whispered this. I don't know if it was like during commercial. I'm like, dude, I was going to take you, but I couldn't tell you that before until Danielle cast her vote because had I told Danielle that I was really going to take Ian, I would have lost that vote. So I thought I had Danielle for sure. And Jen, I mean, if, if you had told me a day before the finale that there, I wouldn't get Jen's vote, you know, I would have been dumbfounded, you know, and, and that's what, how it went down. And I was surprised and, you know, that's what happened. Um, okay, now we have, I don't know what to do here because I have, a, I have a big surprise lined up. It's our first surprise of the evening, but it was actually more intended for Memphis. But I don't know if we're going to get Memphis in here. So we're just going to take the surprise now. Sorry, Memphis. We'll tell you all about it if we do get you in here. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You look like a bot. I know. <laughs> look at this background. Are, are, you, are, you, are you the godfather, Brian? What? Look at this background. I'm at work. I'm at work. I'm at work just about to finish and we Memphis can't get, will be just we can't getting started. Memphis in here. Yeah, I'm at work. Very okay, you guys, you guys talk amongst Memphis. yourselves. I'm working on getting Memphis in here. Yeah, man, I'm good, man. How are you, Dan? It sounds like you didn't watch, but I'll tell you, man, this season was not easy. It was a struggle, and it was tough, and, you know, you know I know. Bro, this, yeah. all I heard is this. All I heard is I'm saying, I'm talking to this guy on the phone who, I usually Houdini myself out of these situations. Rarely am I able to follow through and somebody actually finds me. They can barely find me here. And then next thing I know, he tells, this is the exact quote that I heard. No one will remember who Will is after they watch Dan this season. So all I know is I heard, you're basically like reality royalty here, but this is the word, this is pretty much what I'm hearing. I heard you just I destroyed it. Just, there he is. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Brian, where the hell are you? You tell me, buddy. What the where, fuck am no. I doing here? I'm at work. Where the top of like L.A. Live? <laughs> I see. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Um, Memphis, Memphis, uh, just to take control here for a second, I told, I told Memphis before this show started that I was finally going to get a reaction out of Memphis, who's kind of like the Iceman, and I felt like Brian was the one who was going to help me do it. What? I saw Brian, like, yesterday. Where are you? <laughs> That's what I told him. I'm like, I see Memphis every but day. But Brian's not the guy who's going to go on a shot. Big Brother web show, Memphis. Why can't you give me a little bit of credit? I gave him such a hard sell. That is Bro. He called, bro, he's called me like six times, texts me, sends me emails. I felt like if I didn't log on, I was going to hear it for the next week. He's very Brian, persistent. Brian, I will say this. The dude that won was obsessed with you. He told me that he would take notes on you from sh from uh, After Dark about how you would pick up. Well, they obviously, they obviously weren't many notes. <laughs> they were clip notes. <laughs> what do you have? We have like a day? Who, what, what was his he, name, he Ian? He talked about you all the time, and I'm like, dude, how do you even know what he said? He, like, would recite verbatim things you would say to Angie to, like, kind of bring her into your web, and he's like, I use this stuff on girls in college. I'm like, you know, I don't know how you're, he would, Memphis, he would, he would say, <laughs> he would talk about girls. What? <laughs> Who is this guy? Oh, I don't know, man, what do you think? What, what are we talking about? I'm, I'm confused. I don't know. Uh, I think I, uh, I think Dan is just telling Brian about how Ian was using Brian's pickup techniques. Right? Am I right, Dan? Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's pretty interesting. What What do you think about Ian? I didn't really get to meet the guy, but I mean, I think he played yeah. a good game. But uh, I, it's, I don't know. The, the last bit was pretty crazy. He kind of fell into that. That he fell into where he fell. So I don't. You know, I don't have much to talk about the guy actually. Brian, you know, you, know, you know what this reminds me of? And week one, Brian and I, they never aired it. Brian and I were just trying to scheme in the back room about how we could get Memphis out of the house. I mean, they never aired it. I mean, we were saying, like, I'm going to punt Memphis out of this house. And Brian's like, yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> That's probably the last time we've all talked. <laughs> yeah, it worked out well. <laughs> 
I remember because I was like, all right, if he doesn't go, he's going to the end and I'm fucked. So that was the first thought in my head. And, well, hey, you know, to be right and to be wrong. We got we to gotta get back into it. We've got like a million <laughs> questions. I promised Brian I was only going to take five minutes of his time. Brian, thank you so much. I feel like Big Brother web shows are not really your scene, so I really appreciate you uh, making an appearance. Congratulations, Dan. Take it easy. <laughs> Memphis, I'll see you in about two hours. See you, Brian. Um, Memphis, I wanted, uh, I wanted your take on Dan's game. You know, you're the original renegade. Did you almost feel like, you know, you couldn't really root for Dan because you weren't there and he was, like, kept calling other people his Memphis? No, I mean, I think I, the most hilarious thing that he kept doing, and Ashley was like, why does he always say your whole name? Why doesn't he just say Memphis? <laughs> and I thought it was pretty funny. He just... He couldn't. He only has to say it's just Memphis Garrett at all times. I don't think he said Memphis any time in the house. So that was pretty funny. I thought his game was great. You know, I mean, I, I watched the whole season. I, I, you know, I stayed right by my TV and by the tweets and all that stuff. Um, and it was going to be very difficult for him, like I said before, to even make it as far as he did. So I mean, I give him props. He he played an he played an amazing game. And I, you know, it's one of those things where I wasn't there. I wasn't asked to be there. So. At this point, it's like he was trying to use everything he can. So if he could, if I could help him out and I'm not even in the house, God forbid, you know, he can run my name all over the place. He can call everyone as Memphis for all I care, as long as he, uh, you know, takes it to the end, which he did. So, you know, and he did an amazing job. Well, you know, Memphis brings up a good point. Uh, he brings up a good point. Like, I, like without Memphis, I couldn't have leveraged as much as I did. Like, everyone wanted to be Memphis, but we all know, no, there is no other Memphis, you know, there is no other renegade, you know, like, it's just like, I would tell people and the people that had watched the show, they knew how loyal and how tight we are. They know how tight we are outside of the house. Dude, the dude stood up at my wedding. I stood up in his wedding and we met on a reality show. And like, that's powerful in a house where you can't trust anyone. That's gold. And when I could tell someone, you know, Ian, you're like that, or, you know, Danielle, you're like that. I mean, people wanted to believe that because we had so much success, but at the end of the day, there is no other Memphis. There, there's, you know, I could never trust someone in that game like I trusted Memphis, you know, no, re regardless of what I said. Memphis, uh, if you were a coach, who would you have picked for your team and why? Um, how many did you get? You get to pick three, correct? Is that how it was? It was three yeah. players. So you can't, um, can't, don't, you can't pick all studs either. You got to you got to go <laughs> one from each team. I think you know I, at, fir at the first at the first week. I think I, I think I probably would have picked. Um, I probably would have picked Frank, only because he grew up like uh, probably like five miles away from uh, where I grew up, um, and then I probably would have picked uh, maybe Kara. Second team. And then I That's probably would. Those are two first-year players. And then, <laughs> you got Frank's a first rounder. You got to pick a second rounder. So and then the I second would've... rounders were Ashley, or Ashley, Ian, uh, Danielle, and who did uh, Willie? And Willie. Um, yeah. I probably would have picked another girl. So probably I don't know. That's a tough decision. <laughs> Between what Ashley and Danielle, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I, I probably Ashley, probably Ashley. I, I could see, I could see Memphis, um, you know, kind of setting things up like I did with Danielle, except with Ashley. You know, Memphis has the, the same capabilities, and and he's a great leader. And and I could see, you know, Ashley love the other thing. Ashley loved Memphis. She's like, Dan, I liked you, but Memphis was so hot, I had a crush on him. And I could see Memphis. He just wants to get that. into Memphis's clubs. That's all. That's the only reason she yeah, likes yeah, Memphis. Yeah, yeah. Um. No, I mean, it's it's weird because you never know, like, sometimes when you get into the house, like, there's a dynamic you think you have with someone, and then over a couple of days or weeks, you realize, what the what the hell was I thinking? Or, like, I don't have anything in common with this person, and why am I even talking to them? And you kind of fill it out because, you know, it, it's tough to make, you know, assumptions off one or two days, especially when you're living with someone. So over time, you get to build, you know, relationships with different people, and you realize who people really are. Um with me and Dan, you know, we, it just, it took a couple of weeks, but once we realized like who each other were, we had an automatic like connection and friendship and it ended up going a long way because no one really, you know, people thought we had like something going, but no one was a hundred percent sure that we had an alliance going on. So, and that, that benefited us through our game. 
Um, it's tough. It was tougher for him this year because he couldn't, he didn't have anyone to like kind of sneak around for him. He had to use all these other people and it was, it was tough. And that's why it ended up just being the Dan show. Um, Memphis, do you feel like there's ethics in the game? I almost felt like on Big Brother 10, you made more of like the bloody moves, you know, and like Dan sort of benefited from those. Um, are there ethics in this game? And do you feel like Dan played a much more different game this time? And was that necessary? I, don't, I you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't think there's very many ethics. And I mean, it's reality TV. It's a game show you're trying to win. It's, it's, there's no, there's no ethics about it. People can freak out all they want and say, oh, you're a bad person or you did this. I mean, I tried to kill like an 85 year old man on national te television. So I don't really know like <laughs> what everyone got a bit out of shape about. Come on stressful in that house freaks you out sometimes you do uh, crazy shit <laughs> <laughs> um why do you think why you know and and i guess this question is back to dan like you know we we had a very similar situation last season where it was like rachel and portia and i guess the jury voted for the returning player whereas this season they did the complete opposite and they voted for the newbie do you feel like it just depends on, like, what season it is, whether they're going to respect the vet, or does that not have anything to do with it? Well, I think the great thing that Rachel did, and correct me if I'm wrong, is there was at least, what, three veterans on that jury? Is that correct? Was Jeff, Jeff Brendan, and Jordan were all on that jury, correct? That's right, yes. I mean, that's uh, that was huge. I mean, those are all people that, that liked and respected. What's that? Yeah, it's, it was enormous. And, you know, credit to her for, for picking things off that way. You know, and, and, you know, she pulled it off, but she was smart to set up the jury that way. You know, the, the catch-22 for me is, do I want to go into a final six or seven situation with Janelle and Boogie there, two, two competitors that I probably can't beat physically, you know, or at least I, I got to pull out one out of, pull another one out of my hat to beat them, you know. But at the same time, having them in the jury, I think even if Janelle was in the jury or Mike Boogie was in the jury, you know, they're so convincing that, you know, maybe they could have snagged one or two for me. Dan, was Ian a real renegade? Will Memphis welcome him to the club? Well, here's the thing, because I can't take credit for the renegades. Memphis is really the creator of it. You know, we kind of formed that thing together. You got to remember, I wanted to call it the Wild Mustangs. Memphis is like, <laughs> cut that crap out, dude. We're the renegades. So, Good call, you know, Memphis. Memphis is the CEO. I'm the CFO. Uh, you know, so it, it really falls on Memphis because, you know, he, he had a chance to watch the whole season. He saw some things I didn't, and, you know, for that to happen, Memphis has got to give him the stamp of approval because it's not, it's not a one, the Renegades is not a one-man show. It's, it's, a, it's a joint ventureship. And Memphis, Memphis, how do you feel about, uh, about Ian's uh, application? No, I mean, look, and I told this to Ian when I, when I saw him. It's one of those things where, look, man, it's, you know, you, you created your own little quack pack, so you take that to the end, and that's, you know, that was your claim to fame. So keep that and just leave the <laughs> Renegades alone. And um, I, I I'm trying to – <laughs> you know, plus um, the thing too, plus here's the thing too, Mertz, it's like Memphis is a straight shooter. He's the cool one. He's the one wearing the silky jackets with the earpiece in the clubs. <laughs> I'm the goofy guy that doesn't belong in the clubs. You know, there's the renegades. You can't have two goofy guys that don't belong in the clubs. It's, Memphis can't get us both in the clubs. You can only get one at a time. And I still <laughs> want to get in a Greystone Manor. <laughs> Um, Memphis, I almost feel like this, this isn't even a show. I feel like this is just one big commercial for Greystone Manor. I feel like this is like probably the 19th time Dan and I have dropped that name in the last like 30 minutes. I think that's how it was for After Dark too. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you, I guess Memphis, like, what did you think of Dan's game? Do you feel like he was wrong? Do you feel like it was the best game of all time? Do you feel like it tainted a season that, you know, and don't take offense to this, but certainly I thought it was a much more entertaining season than Big Brother 10. And I don't mean that like personally, I just feel like more people were invested this time. No, I mean, I think, I think Dan made one of the best seasons of Big Brother, um, just strictly, and people can argue all day about what season was the best and who was the best player or whatever. And that's all opinion. So everyone has, you know, their choice of who they, who they want to choose. But as far as entertainment value, I think by far this season was one of the best seasons that I've ever watched. It kept people in, involved. It, you know, I saw Julie Chen the night before the finale at Greystone Manor, and she was with Les, and I had a, 
I went up to her and we started talking, just talking, just shooting the shit. And uh, she was like, even like, I, I just don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. And she's like, I've never, I've never hosted a season like this where I just, I just don't know. So even her, it threw her off because, you know, obviously her watching all the footage and hearing all the in, intel, she can make the assumption of what's going to happen, you know, during the final two or final three or whatever. So she didn't even know. So if you if you can fool the master Julie Chen, the host of the show from day one, you know it, it that's entertainment. Uh, Dan, have you and Danielle spoken since you returned home? I I'm getting this like over and over again. Yeah, we we talked um, the next day at press day, but I really haven't. T- the only house guest I've talked to, or I've, I was talking to, I've talked to uh, since I've been home has been Brittany. Brittany, Brittany and I text. She'll send me like hilarious texts just randomly. And, and have I talked to anyone else? Uh, Mike Janelle. Janelle and Mike Boogie left me a voicemail at I think at like 4 a.m. last night or something. I don't, but I haven't talked to him. Um, you hurt yourself today. Are you okay? We might have to wrap you up in bubble. Yeah, like what happened? Did Frank get mad or something? I don't know. I think I, I what? yeah, here it is. Something happened in one of the competitions and it's just been bothering me so far. I went to. The hospital today had it looked at, got it scanned, and they said I, I tore, uh, I have a small tear in my muscle, and I should be fine in a week, so it's not a big deal. But it just was, you know, I have a pretty high threshold for pain. It just was nagging me, and, and I had to get it looked at. Um, Memphis, you know, the last time, everybody keeps talking about Dan's mist and, like, how he was able to work the jury over when he beat you on Big Brother 10. I wanted to find out what your thoughts were on his final jury performance this season. Well, this season it was a little bit tougher for him, I think, obviously, because he didn't have me just to just to beat up on. But uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's a uh, it's tough. Whenever people and this, just so you guys know, it's different now. It it used to be different. Um, in season ten, it was the last season that they did it. They did it like our way, which is basically they have a couple days after we're over the phone from each other and stuff, or however they do it, and they have a night, right, Dan? They had like a whole night to kind of talk with the whole with the whole uh jury not just you know one missing so they have some time to think about it and talk to each other and people can sway each way i it, i think it's weird because either way it's it's odd because those people walked into before they even asked asked, asked or answered the questions and they already thought about who they wanted to win so it's going to be tough for anyone to sway someone's vote when they've already chosen and they've walked into that, that studio and it's the final night. So I think that's what he had up against him. I think he, you know, he, uh, (laughs) just the pure entertainment value of him booting people out like he did was, uh, is going to be a tough thing to come back from because people, people, uh, you know, a lot of people this season were very bitter on the way they left the door. A lot of people in the game, they're like, Oh, I lost. That's it. That's the game. Other people, when they get when they get booted, they they just have in their minds that they think they're going to win the game. Somehow they thought they were going to win the game. So, you know, some of those people that got booted that thought they were. Mertz, let me let me add to that, Mertz. Mertz, can you close that audience question? Because Memphis brings up a point, and and you'll appreciate this logistically. Memphis hit on it when we gave our jury speeches. Like there was no cap on our opening speech. Like I think Memphis talked for five minutes. I'm going to talk for seven or eight minutes on our on our argument. You know, I, I, during our opening arguments or our closing arguments, I created a fake veto medallion and I pulled that thing out and explained it why I did it. I was rambling on and on and I actually showed it to the jury. They could see us and what Memphis said over the phone. We we could just hear them, and so on top of that, so we had an uncapped. Um, speech with the jury and they each asked us two questions so it was like it was a couple hour ordeal um that memphis and i got to talk with this jury and even after we talked to the jury memphis and i are like we were more confused than ever we're like that you know that that definitely didn't clear up who's voting for who you know but at the same time you know i knew going into this that that's the 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 final setup was different you know so it's not like i can't blame it on that but i'm saying it was it was uh it wasn't live so they literally went on for an hour just grilling us on everything. And there at one point, I think they were just like yelling at both me and Dan. And we were just sitting there like, all right, so who's got the next question? Because they're all pissed off. They're in the jury together. So like, so it's not live so they can edit on this footage. They're just reaming into both of us. And we're like, what the hell is going on? It was pretty hilarious. But it's it's just different now. So it's, it's kind of. Isn't that where 
Mertz, before I, before I left on the show, because I couldn't tell Memphis, I'm like, dude, um, I, uh, I'll tell him. I'm like, dude, you got to send me some of your jewelry. I'm not going to tell you why. And I get this package from him, and it says, from Memphis Garrett, it says, company, no remorse. And what and that just hit me is during the jury speeches, Jerry was, was going at Memphis. He's screaming, you have no remorse for anything. And so, like, this is all stuff that just happened during that final jury speech that just, I mean, Memphis, people were pissed at us, and they're screaming at us, and we just got to sit there and take it. But at least we got to really kind of get in their head a little bit. He, he was, he was that's referring, what no remorse I had no remorse for him falling into the pool that day. Um, Chelsea, Chelsea, I feel like you got to ask a question to Memphis here. We got to get you a little bit more involved. You're supposed to be Kelly. I'm. This is this is gold. I'm just sitting back and listening. <laughs> um, and and also, I know Chelsea. a lot of people in the chat room are like put our questions through. We have like over like 400 questions in the chat room, and the scroll thing is not really working properly. So I'm just like, it's basically like. I'm spinning the wheel of fortune, and I'm just like putting through whatever, whatever it lands on. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find Mertz, one. From Mertz, I told you there's only two, Mertz. I told you there's only two members of the Renegades. I overlooked probably two of the most important members, and and that's through marriage. You know, there's uh, two Mrs. Renegades in the Renegades, and Ashley and, and Chelsea, and, and I, I don't think that's what they signed up for, but they know <laughs> it through through the rings on her finger. They're, they're Who fine. who's the leader of the Renegades? He did. It's this, e this guy right here. Equal right opportunity there. Lender. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Dan, do you feel like do you feel like you would have benefited a little bit more if they got rid of the jury system? You know, like let's say America had voted. I'm I'm actually not sure what would have happened because Ian is obviously like America's favorite, but you were clearly the best player. Do you like that sort of format or do you feel like people that have already been beaten should still have a hand in who wins? Well, the thing for me is, like, you know, if you rely on, like, look at season two and season three, I believe, you look at how they voted on that, and it's really, I don't really agree with that because, you know, people are voting based on the producers editing how they feel that person fit their role. Where, although I didn't win the second time, like, you know, I have no problems with it because the information was controlled and contained. So it's like they're not watching something that's slanted in a certain light to paint me as a bad guy and Ian as the good guy. They're making a judgment on their own. Good, bad, or indifferent, I'd rather have it be like that where at least I have some control or attempt to control versus, you know, I don't know that someone's watching my DRs and what, what, which one of my DRs are actually making it to air and, and who I'm really ticking off. So it's like I feel like with the system it is now, it's at least self-contained. You know, obviously – I think the longer I would have had to talk to the jury, the better it would have been for me. Um, but, you know, that would be my only pushback is that, you know, these, you know, who, next season two people are going to fight their tails off to get to the final two. You know, maybe consider, consider giving them more than 90 seconds to, to fight their case. You know, I knew that was – I knew I was well aware. They, they told me four or five days in advance. They gave us stopwatches and said you're going to have between an hour or a minute 30 and a minute 45 to do it. So I have no complaints. I knew what I was getting myself into, but I'm just saying maybe one way to improve the game is give, give, you know, give someone a chance to, to really work the jury over. Because, um, you know, like Memphis said, can you really do that in 90 seconds on live television? And, you know, I don't know. And, yeah, and Memphis, don't worry. I know you have to go to yeah. work. I'm, I'm waiting for a surprise. I'm waiting yeah. for a surprise for you, Memphis, that should be coming up momentarily. Um, in the meantime, I, Dan, do you feel like you played to win, or do you feel like you played to be remembered and sell more books? I definitely didn't play to be remembered and sell more books. I played because I love this game and I was willing to do whatever it, it took to get to the end. Uh, to answer the question, I was playing to get to the final two because I really felt confident in my ability to scrounge up four votes through speaking to the jury with people who, you know, obviously miscalculated, who weren't going to be that mad at me because it happened the first time around. The first time around with Memphis, people were mad at me, but I was able to talk them out of it a little bit. This time, you know, I just didn't get it done, you know, so I, I came to play the game as hard as I could, and I know some former winners didn't like the way I played, and they said I was, you know, too flashy or trying to make a show. Well, that's part of what I did, you know, people that saw season 10, like I went up there and made a crazy speech because that's how I, I caused chaos in the house, and when, you know, people that saw season 10 and, and season 14, you're going to let me call a house meeting and have free reign to talk to everyone in the house? It's like, didn't you watch season 10? I mean, I was essentially doing the same thing, but just, 
you know, was more effective. Um, Memphis, I wanted your take on Danielle. Everybody keeps telling me to ask about Danielle's lies and, like, how Danielle stretched the truth. Before we get to Dan's perspective, Memphis, watching the show, what did you think of Danielle? I mean, somehow, for some reason, some people just start lying over stuff that doesn't really even matter. And me and Dan talked about this in L.A. when he was here, and it was like she was lying over just stupid stuff. So some people just get like that, and I, I don't know why, and uh, they I don't know. So – you know, some people, when they once they hit that house, they start lying about crazy stuff that makes a difference, and at the end of the day, it doesn't. Um, she's a character. She's not, <laughs> she's not much. Uh, she, was, she was great casting. She was certainly great casting. Yeah, I mean, she was great on TV, and the shit that she was doing was crazy. And same, same thing goes with Ian, too. I mean, to watch him. Dan, I don't know if you've seen some of the crazy shit he was doing, like, after dark and stuff, creeping around the house. But it was pretty hilarious, so... I mean, between, you know, a lot of the cast members were casted very well, I think, this year. And, and Dan, um, what did you think about Danielle, I guess, in the house and what little you know of her now after being out of the house? Um, you know, I think Danielle, honestly, you know, she has good intentions. She didn't go in there trying to rile people up. You know, um, she did the best she could with what she had. You know, she... Whether some of the stuff she said, we don't know. It might have been strategy for lying. And if it was, you know, I'd tip my hat to her. If, you, if you're in that game and you lie and you get people to believe you, no matter what it's about, you know, that's awesome. You know, and, and so I think she did the best with what she had and the tools that she had in the game. And, you know, whatever was said in that house, good or bad or indifferent. If so, you know, I know some things were said about Chelsea and the house. And, and to me, it's like, just like I leave my heart at the door when I play that game, I treat everyone the same way. I don't really hold people accountable for things they said in that house, regardless of how horrible or, or you know, whatever the case is. I, I don't, you know. Um, now, now Memphis, uh, I told you I had a big surprise for you. I know we got to let you go in exactly three to four minutes. Um, I yeah. guess one of the questions... He's a busy guy. He's got to run Greystone Manor. I know. <laughs> that, that's mention number 21. <laughs> um, now, I guess the big question... Oh, real I, quick, real quick. For the, yes, Dan. Guys, real quick, Mertz. There's people, in the, there's people in the chat saying, what's Greystone Manor? What's Greystone Manor? Here's how I explain it. Greystone Manor is a place that only exists for a certain population of people. <laughs> I'm not in that population. And when you get in there, it's not real life. It's not. There's... Things you, people should never see. There's people hanging from the ceiling. There's there's bottles spraying everywhere. There's fireworks, and it's not a real place. I mean, you walk in there, and it's like a fantasy. It, it literally, it I'll, literally you know, is paradise, Memphis. I'm sorry. I know Dan and I talk about it a lot, and I know it's like nothing. It's like going to Ralph's for you, but it's a big deal for us that are not in L.A. Um, okay, here it is. Now, now Memphis. Okay, now Memphis, to break down this surprise. Um, I know that whenever I hang out with you guys, I'm similar to Ian in the sense that I always ask if I can be a renegade, and I know that was all about Ian. He wants to be a renegade. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. There he is. There's a half million dollar man. Hi, Ian. What's up, buddy? I can't hear him. Wait, I can't. Are you talking? Ian, can you talk? We lost Memphis. Where'd Memphis go? Wait, wait, can you hear him? I can't hear him either. 2012, not having a computer with a microphone on it. <laughs> wait, let me try and bring Memphis back, too. It, I, I still hear Memphis. Okay, Memphis, I'm going to resend you the thing, okay? So just look out for you. it while Ian hopefully fixes it. You. We can't see you, Memphis, so I'm going to send it back to you in a second. Right. One sec. I'm going to come up. Okay. Chelsea. In the meantime, hopefully, Hi. he's going to say hello. It's working. <laughs> Ian looks way Ian looks way better than than he did the day after. I mean, he looks like he's he looks like the normal Ian. Okay, wait. Now Ian is There back. she is. Okay, wait, wait. okay, hang on, hang on. Get here. <laughs> wait. Oh, I see what it is. Okay. All four in the red. Can you hear? Okay, wait. I can only I can only get three people on apparently in the new vocal. I think that's what it is. So my big plan um, okay, wait, Ian, can we hear you? I don't know what's happening wait. with your mic. Mertz, Memphis, Mertz, take me on his head. Yes. No, Mertz, take me off and put Memphis on because I want to see this. Got it. Hey, there you go. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> there, got it. Oh, oh there, there we are. Ashley, come back. <laughs> but, we, but we can't hear Ian, though. <laughs> Why can't we hear Ian? He apparently is not. My language. 
I don't know what's wrong Ian's with Ian's speechless. Mic. Ian's like, oh my gosh, it's Memphis. It's Memphis. I know, that's how I was the first time I met him, too. Um, wait, Ian, Ian, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Ian, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. Okay, Ian, I want you... I want you to exit out and then come back and ask the question again. I feel like that might do it. And then also click on your settings and check your like mic levels. Okay, so call back and I'll put you back through. Okay, there we go. I know it kind of like it kind of lost, lost the luster of my big surprise because his mic wasn't working. How pretty is Ashley, by the way, Mertz? Oh my God! Clearly, Memphis is better. I, I can't, because I feel like, I can't really, like, talk about Ashley, because I feel like then Memphis is going to get mad at me, but it's very difficult. I mean, suffice to say that before I went to L.A. and I got my camera and I was like, all right, who do I want to photo with? Well, Dan, I've already met him a bunch of times. Um, yeah, of course. Ian, you know, yeah, okay, if I get one, okay, it's cool. Danielle may, but I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Memphis. I'm like, Ashley's going to take photos with us at, at Greystone, right? Um, and then, and then Chelsea, tell the story about like what I said in terms of like who I was the most excited to see in LA in order. Right, come back. Okay, I'm Is Ian coming back? Ashley, number one. No, Ian. <laughs> I'm excited to see Ashley. Uh, yeah, what is she doing? Okay, wait, wait, yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and get him back on. Okay, hang on, let me check. Ian has wow. not come Dude, what a game, back man. in, so we're waiting for him. I was watching, I was like, that Texas game, I don't know if you saw it, I think you were on here, but that Texas State and the NC way, State game was crazy. Or o OC State, sorry, Oklahoma State. It was pretty intense. Oh, there he goes. You're I'm good. trying to co-host Ian now, but he doesn't seem to be accepting it. Okay, wait, there he is. Okay. You're good. Okay, hang on now. Yes, yes. There he yeah. is. Um, okay, now now we're only going to keep Ian here. Now, Ian, first of all, I know you're coming back and you're doing your own version of the merch show, which I think we're going to hopefully do. Chelsea, i got to check with my co-host, but I think that's happening next weekend. But in the meantime, I only told Ian that he was here for a renegade induction ceremony. So I feel like Dan in Memphis, this would be a good time for you to tell Ian and I if we have what it takes to become renegades. I'll defer, I'll defer, I'll defer to Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> Induction. Uh, yes, tell us. Tell, I, I feel like we're, we can we can bring a lot of like intelligence, and I feel like we can bring a lot of books to the Renegade Equation. <laughs> okay, nice. What about Ian? What about Ian? That's hilarious. I gotta look out for my boy. <laughs> All right, how about this? I'll, I'll throw this out there. All right, clearly, Memphis. Clearly, you know Memphis is the the leader of the Renegades, right. and there's only room for one goofy guy. However, without committing to anything, I think both Memphis and I would be willing to take Ian under our wings. <laughs> Maybe a weekend in L.A., a couple, couple times at Graystone Manor. Ian will come with us, and then we'll, we'll put him through his training. You know, so I think it's a little <laughs> premature to say right. definitely yes or definitely no, but... Okay. Ashley's going to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but I... I'd so be, wait, I'd does be that mean I don't have to go through yeah, boot camp? Does that mean I'm automatically good. in Memphis? What about this? Let's set it up like this. What what about Mertz or Ian will make it? Not both though. You guys are gonna <gasps> here? Ooh. No, we have we have mm. a Why do you always have to become such a villain, Dan? Okay, we're all friends here. We're not in the Big Brother house, okay? You don't have to become like Doctor Evil. Um, all right, uh, before before we let Ian go, I just wanna take a screenshot for the website. We just gotta hold this pose for five seconds. Okay, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> Wait, wait. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in You're Pittsburgh, uh, just with family for now. Relaxing. Tell them I said hi. I love that. Uh, upstairs in bed. Sign language. Sign language. Okay. 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 
in January. Yeah. Has Kristen Bidding said anything yeah. to you yet, Ian? That's the question <laughs> everybody wants to know. Uh, a few general tweets, yeah, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, no long-term plans, sadly. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, all right, wait. We got. We got to take this I screenshot because I've got like people here. Okay, let's take the screenshot. Hold it just for five seconds. Ready, Memphis. Five. Dan, you got to do it. Perfect. Uh, all right. Well, I will say this real quick. Ian looks way better um, than the day after press. I think like you know, I, this is how I'm used to seeing Ian. I don't. Ian, we have Ian and I have not talked. Since the day yeah. after the show, yeah, this is I mean, the first. You just look one. way better rested, and, and you look you look like the Ian I'm used to. Yeah, the day got after, a haircut. I mean, yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, definitely really uh, <laughs> tired. I didn't get a single wink of sleep uh, after I won, just the whole night. So. Ian, why didn't you come to Greystone with us? That's the question that I keep asking Dan in Memphis. I don't know. I I just saw my family. I just wanted to be with my family. I right, come back. But it's Greystone Manor, Ian, know, like, just know, like Dan told you on the feed. Guys like us, we have a very limited window. Okay, sounds good. All right, we're going we're gonna to let Memphis go. We're going to let Memphis go. Memphis, thank you so much. See you, Memphis. Wow. Bye. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. <laughs> uh, all right, now, Ian, Ian, I'm going to let you go because we've got to bring on, like, Kelly and Sue in just a second. We're going to have... We're gonna have you back on Chelsea. When do you want to do the Ian interview? Since we can, we can like schedule it right now. We'll figure it out. Ian, um, check your. We gotta to touch base before we go to Seattle. All right. Do you see? I'm trying to hook. I'm trying to hook this up with Wizards of the Coast. I want. Do you want to nerd out and go on a tour? All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, I'll go, I'll and, and Ian, Ian, before I let you go, um, right. what what is your relationship with Dan like now? Are you cool with him? Um, is it, is it still, I mean, yeah, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I've heard all kinds of things about the whole season, what anybody you have said, so I really don't reasons care. to be cool, Ian. Water under the bridge. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right, awesome. Thank exactly. you so much for calling in. I know. I have watched the feeds. I've seen the feeds. I've seen the speed transcripts. Thanks, I know Ian. what's going on. Take it easy. I guess. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, are we back? Yeah, there. Okay, it's back. I don't know what just happened there. Okay. Hey, everyone in the chat, everyone in the chat room, real quick. Mertz was trying to cut you guys off, and I told us to turn it back on. <laughs> he doesn't know the power he has. Have I been able to watch any of Chelsea's interviews or participation? Um, I've seen, a, read a couple of Chelsea's interviews, and it's, it's funny to me to see people try and bait her into questions, and she just knocks them out of the park. So for me, that's really cool to see that. Um, I know her least favorite house guest was Ted, you know, which, I mean, of course, I, no one likes Ted. But uh, it was cool. And then I saw her, she did an interview uh, for CBS Detroit, and, you know, it's cool for me to see that, She's out there as well, and you guys get a chance to see why I'm, I'm so in love with her because she's just a great person. What you see with Chelsea is what you get. There's no smoke and mirrors, you know, sometimes like there's with me. Um, okay, wait, hang on. I'll let you answer this while I bring I Kelly on. I'm going to talk, Mertz, do what you got to do. I'm going to talk to some people in the chat room right now. Oh. The Bears, okay, never mind. What's up, Chris? Shamika, what's up? Uh, Ask some questions, people. I'm just trying to get, get, give people shout-outs. Chelsea needs to learn the, the chat room. <laughs> Gabor, what's up? Uh, Dylan, what's up? Leifer, what's up, man? Ricky Wu, what's oh, up? Oh, obsessed with BB. I love <laughs> obsessed her. Obsessed with BB. Is it, yeah, she's nice. She sends me some epic tweets all the time. Um, 
Tina Winters, I just saw Bobby Graham. What's up, Brittany Sanchez, Mickey Joe. Uh, let's see if we can answer some of these questions now. See if you can catch one. Dan, come to Vancouver. I will. <laughs> Thanks, I will. Oh, gosh, these are going so hey, fast. Hey, Chelsea, Geese Pack, come to New York. Thanks, I will. Geese Pack. Jessica Parker. I wonder, is that Jessica Parker from uh, the Diary Room, Jessica Parker? Oh, someone just asked where Frank the dog is. Go get him. Yeah, go get Frank. Frank. Uh, why didn't I shout out King Dan? What's up? What happened to Michigan State? I don't know. Um, go Buckeyes! I like the Buckeyes. I'm I'm cool with that. There he is. Here's Here the star he of the show. What's up, buddy? What's up? Oh boy. What up? What's it? Where are we? No, Kelly. Oh, Kelly. Oh. Can you read this? Yes, Dan. What up, Joe Schmo? Carrie Underwood fan, what's up? Rochester dude, I just saw you. Nicole Spears, what do you guys think of Frank? Haircut or no haircut? What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I know you like me. I know you like me. Good boy. Did haircut. everybody see the video of Frank come seeing Dan for the first time? Wasn't that so cute? You good boy. It's on his YouTube channel if you missed it, but it was adorable. He's a good boy. Yeah, you are. Really good boy, buddy, aren't you? You're a really good boy. Yeah. All right, let's answer some more questions, see if I can catch one. Would Chelsea play Big Brother? No, I just talked. We talked about that today. She would not play it. She's too nice. Shout out. What's up? Let's see. Dan, come to Lebanon. Have some kids. Oh, here's a question. Let's let Chelsea answer this one. I'll read it to you. Is it difficult to have your husband adjusting back to real life after he's been out of your life for 75 days? Chelsea, <laughs> what do you think? Well, it's funny. I was kind of worried about that uh, while he was gone, but as soon as we saw each other, it, it was like he had never left. So it's it's been a good adjustment. I love seeing him every day and getting to be around him, and we've just had a lot of fun. We had a busy schedule. I don't know for anybody that didn't see our tweets but we went right from LA to Chicago to for a wedding so we were running around like crazy so just these past couple of days were the first days that we've been home and got to hang out so it's been wonderful no Frank does not sleep with us no and for everybody that tweeted me well actually it's Dan's fault for asking you guys to tweet me so many times about Dan or Frank sleeping in the bed he never ever slept in the bed Frank, raise a paw if this is true. It's true. Kelly, are you in here? Where are you? Kelly on. No, Kelly, I'm looking for Kelly. Where is Kelly? Because Kelly insists on like coming in as like KG and that I don't I don't see Kelly in here. Kelly, are you in here? I don't understand why she just doesn't come in as Kelly. I have Okay, yes, yes, do that while I try and find Kelly. Wait. Yes. Oh, finally. Okay, but I have to say something before we start. Merch! 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 Here we go. I know you're going to get mad at me about the Ian thing. I know you're going to get mad about... I got all your texts, okay? I got all your, like, raving texts about Ian. We were having a hard time even connecting Memphis to Ian, so I couldn't do okay. five. I thought right. that might well, be, I'll like, that. tempting fate. I wanted to be on when Memphis was on. Merch. Um, I wanted to be on when Memphis was on. I don't think people realize that guy is so good looking in person. <laughs> you would just die. Honest to God. <laughs> Welcome to my life. This, this is my life. These three women, that's my Mertz. life. I have to juggle three women constantly talking <laughs> no. about good looking guys. And how just cool that. Mertz, today yes, I asked yes, Dan. Too, please. I said, you know what, Dan? I learned this year at watching him how much patience my son has. So you know what I said to him? I said, you have got to remember that when you're talking with me. I saw you for 75 days has the patience of a saint. So it's my turn to get some of that patience. Love you, hon. Um, Sue, I have to tell you that I thought we were going to get a lot of feedback about having Dan on the show finally after he's out of the house. I would say that out of every five tweets I got about this show, three of them were about if Sue was going to be here. 
Well, I had my big Polish picnic. We we waited, Mertz, until Dan got home. Um, we do it, a big end of summer Polish picnic. So like I'm very tired and not up to par. And really, this should be all about you, Dan. Mertz, Sue, Sue, so I kind of I, I, I don't. Uh, Mertz, you know what? I feel about? like I feel like I kind of know you by now, Sue. I gotta ask you. Why did the jury not vote for your son? What, you know what's what? wrong with them? To t you really want my opinion? I mean, no, no offense, Dan. Wait, real quick. Yes. Real quick. Stop. stop. Real quick. Stop. I do not endorse anything that's going to be coming out of my mother's mouth right now. I, I don't co-sign it. I'm not down with it. But you will get 100% honesty from her. But I'm not going to co-sign. If she quotes me, it's a misquote that in the paper right now. So go ahead. I, I go. Hey, well, I'm just going to tell you something. I really, I mean, no offense, and I think I told Dan this. I thought his jury, what is that called? When you speech? talk, speech sucked. <laughs> I, you know, I thought, like, it was, it, to me, it was exit, like, he tried to do the same thing he did on season 10, and it was just not going to work. Now, granted, you only had a minute and a half, but you know what, I you know, and I will tell you too, I was shocked when I just, I really just thought he would get Jen and Danielle's vote. And um, I was shocked when he didn't get, we all just, the whole bar that we were at just went silent when Jen made her vote. Unbelievable. Look at Dan. <laughs> oh, another thing, Dan. Dan, not putting you on the spot or anything. Hey, Dan, not putting you on this the spot. Better. If you had to have used your eviction speech to Danielle, what would you have said? I've already been, I've already dropped him. I think Mertz already dropped it on you. Mertz already knows my, my eviction speech to Danielle because he knows I would have went 100% gangster on it. So you really want me to recite it? Yes, I think a lot of people have asked, have asked about that. Everybody wants to hear what you would have told her because I, I don't know if she would have been able to handle it. All right, well, i got to stand up for this because, you know, I like to stand up. When I, can you point it out? Obviously, I, I would have had a full arm, not, not not like this. But, all right, so I would have said, so blah, 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 blah. I said, Danielle and Ian, we've been living in a horror movie. And right now, we're about to hit the end credits. But you know what? The killer just got caught. And you know what? When you, when you take the mask off the killer, the scary part is, it's your best friend looking in the face. So, Danielle, I'm sorry I have to evict you. And then, see ya! And then... Dan, where, where, I mean, where do you get this, like, this sort of, like, cheesy 80s, like, charm in your references? I just, you know, when people are watching it at home, they're like, how can people not see through this? It, does, does the mist only work in person? Part of the mist derived from William Zabka, a.k.a. Johnny Lawrence and the Karate Kid. When Sheila Kennedy invited me to have dinner with William Zabka, it changed my entire life, Mertz. I mean, it was like... For you, you love reality TV, you get to meet people. Me meeting Johnny Lawrence was, I mean, that's pretty close to the holy grail of Karate Kid. You know, and that changed my life. Um, <laughs> uh, Sue, everybody already wants you back on camera. Someone tweet Williams after it. Uh, okay, L let's see. Okay, wait, we've got a video question. Let, let, let's put this through. Very cool. Okay, is it? Oh, yay! <laughs> hey, I'm not upside down for once. Yay! So I just want to say, um, question, if you, Dan, if you could go back into the game, knowing what you know now, and take one of the people in the um, 16 to the final two, who would you have taken? And I swear, on the Bible, you're my favorite Big Brother player. On the Bible, right here. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Kelly. Thanks. First off, Video questions are epic. I mean, Kelly just stepped up to the plate and knocked one out of the park. But to answer a question seriously, who of the 16 would I have taken to the end? I think everyone knows I would have taken Jody to the end. I mean, come on. How could you not take Jody to the end? No, honestly, I wanted to, I wanted to take Jen to the end because I thought I could beat her. And, you know. Didn't you want to take Boogie to the end, too, well, at the Bo beginning? Yeah, Boogie to the end, but that, you know, clearly when he was in with Frank, I couldn't see. How much, how much, uh, how much pre-prep? 
how much pre-prep did you do, Dan? Like, I feel like a lot of these things you had to have come up with in advance. So I feel like you're not only an expert on getting cast on reality shows, you're also an expert on playing reality shows. So did you come up with all this stuff before going in? Yeah, you know, I, I shot um, three or four strategy videos just on how I was going to draft. And, you know, I really went back and looked at in terms of how I coach players, like how do I get – uh, a five foot two kid to run through a wall for me, you know, and I really went back to basics and that and just really translated that to big brother. You know, I, I did a lot more research this time about, um, you know, I reread the Prince by Machiavelli and, and just how do I avoid that target? And, and cause I knew it was going to be huge on me. And plus, you know, when I had my mom and sister screaming at me on my wedding day, you know, I kind of, that kind of helped my preparation a little bit too. What is he talking? I don't know what, what are you talking, talking about. Talking about? <laughs> do you want to elaborate on that? Because we don't remember that happening. No, that, I'm just, see, the mist doesn't work on my own family. No, <laughs> it does not work on us. It pisses them off, though. I know, the one thing, Mertz, I That's can always right. push their button so easy, especially this one right here. I, this, was, this was so much more fun when it was the Giesling ladies, don't you think? <laughs> I <know. laughs> Can Kelly and I be a surprise visitor when you um, interview Ian? I uh, Maybe you can, Sue. I don't know if I can stomach this, like, I just feel like Kelly's going to be so over the top, A, because she actually likes the guy, and B, because she enjoys, like, irritating me. And I feel like that's a very bad situation for me. I feel like I'm going to lose all control. Wait, wait, but we, we have to first preface this. Every time he did that, Mertz went into a full panic attack down I mean well Mertz it, it's recorded on the world wide web you had a meltdown you had a meltdown yes okay since, okay since Dan's gone we'll have another childhood story okay is that okay Mertz okay. oh wait 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 a second we haven't talked about this Ian thing this is what I'm gonna say Mertz three episodes ago you said you would bring us on when Ian was there. I feel like you're trying to block this interaction. And we've been on the Mertz show so many times this summer. It's the least you can Mertz do. Mertz is End of the story. It's going to happen. So you might as well just let it happen. I absolutely 100% back Dan always did. But that doesn't mean that I can't have like a BB crush, can I? <laughs> So this is how sweet my son was. When he was in kindergarten, he had this girlfriend that he really, <laughs> really liked, but he was really, really shy. But, you know, that's okay. They, she came over and they played, and he went over her house and played. One day the mom calls me up and says, Sue, what was her name, the blonde? I don't even know who you're talking about. Okay, I'll, let's say her name was Lindsay. She goes, Sue, do you know that Dan gave Lindsay a ring? And I said, oh. I said, that's nice. She goes, no, I don't. I think you better come over here. Well, I go over there, and guess what he had done? He had gone into my jewelry box <laughs> and taken a really, really nice piece of jewelry ring and gave it to this five-year-old girl. I think that's the same. I think that's the same same ring he gave you to Chelsea. <laughs> Sabrina. Hey, what's up? Hey, Dan. What's up? Hey, Kelly and Chelsea and Sue. Love you all. So listen, Dan. I huge Dan fan, just rewatched um, Big Brother 10 after Big Brother 14. I actually gave up backstage passes at train tonight so at the Nokia Theater to be on this show and ask you a question. Bought your books, love them. Awesome. I'm going to apply for, I'm going to apply for Big Brother 15, but I mean, like, you know, it's like a horror movie. I know the black people usually get killed off yeah. first. Any Turn advice off. for the application no. process or anything that like that? Awesome. Say that in your interview. I mean, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> 
That's awesome. <laughs> sounds like sounds like you've definitely read the book and and you're putting into use. But you know the fact that you turned down backstage passes or VIP tickets. That's awesome. You know, thank you so much, Sabrina. And uh... you know what? I read both of your I read both of your books, and I've been on Superpass like a crazy fanatic uh, in Auditorium Room Eight. And I got to tell you. Um, I think your gameplay is phenomenal, and your books are so ridiculously insightful. Of course, I'm going to pass up train backstage passes. I so make sure you email y'all. me Just back because I sent you a couple of emails. I love both of them. Respond. Um, thank you so much for you know being so supportive and and awesome and. And you know, it, I just really, I'm gonna. You know, as soon as I get out of here, I promise you, I'll look at those emails. They're just, there's a pile of them. But because you put yourself out there and and came on the merch show and asked the question, and you turned down concert tickets, and you read the books and were epic about it, I, I promise you, I'll answer your emails as soon as this is over. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sabrina. Mm-hmm. All right, rock out. Sabrina Very has cool. a great people... video presence. I think she'd make a good Big Brother candidate yeah. for sure. I hope to see just her the way next she, season. She answered her own question awesomely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's hilarious. Oh. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> what? Um, so, anyway, con- congrats, Dan. Played great Thank game. You. Um, I, so a couple questions. If you had your way about it, would you have gone to battle with, uh, Kara or Danielle? If Kara, you know, obviously things go on differently the first Man, week. You're, you're putting me on the hot seat right away. Um, you know, here's, uh, you know, here, do here's it. the thing. I saw Kara as, had a ton of potential, was awesome in competition, very well liked, but I don't think down when it push came to shove, she would have listened to me as much as Danielle. So she would probably have been more of like, right. I throw this term out all the time, she would have been more of like a Memphis, like genuinely, like Memphis wouldn't, you know, Memphis and I was a partnership. I didn't tell Memphis what to do. You know, we came to the agreement. You know, I kind of, you know, Danielle was able to coach and lead around. Kara was, although she was quiet, she had a really strong personality. So to answer your question, I really can't. I like them both. You know, they both had, Kara, I felt, could have done much better on her own, um, but that wouldn't have been as useful. To me. So you think you would have had a more of a partnership with Kara, where it was more of a coach? You would have the upper, the upper uh, end with uh, with Danielle, okay. and it was going to be a coach player the whole. Exactly, way. it's a great question. Got it. So okay, next question. I got a, I got a bunch. You can cut me off whenever. But okay, um, what is my next question? Uh, yeah, you did almost wake me up. Um, what was I going to ask? Oh, okay. So oh, one more, one more. Oh shit, I got to make this good then. All right, so so you said you had no regrets in playing the game, well, right? So I guess all we can look to is um, working the jury. So, well, that, I, like, for, for instance... My, my one regret, regret in the game is um, okay. when I was in the dark sitting there talking with Joe, if I could go back and extend that conversation 10 to 15 seconds, I would do it. I would have played up like I was Shane. That is honestly my biggest regret because to me, I'm like, it, I, it hit me, and I'm like, is this really happening? And I just let him know it was me way too soon. So I definitely, I would change that because, I mean, I could have squeezed him for more information. Plus, it would have been hilarious. But thanks for the question. All right, now, uh, now, Dan, Dan, uh, we have 200 and, and Chelsea, Chelsea, I know, and Kelly are used to this. As is Sue, we have 286 questions. Let's watch. It's gonna be like. Kelly, will you go out with me, Mertz? <laughs> um, that are submitted. So I'm just going to rapid fire through them. Are you ready for this? I feel like you can only answer them in like a couple of words. Ma, I'll, de- I'll defer all the very hard questions to you. Sounds like a plan. Okay, wait, hang on. Now it's not letting me select. Why did you swear on the Bible knowing that you were going to backstab him, Dan? Okay. Right off the bat, um, I don't blame it on editing, but I blame it on editing. <laughs> um, it, yeah. I'll, Sue, I'll how did you back. keep a straight face when Danielle called herself an endurance beast? <laughs> <laughs> have you have have you watched any of the season fourteen episodes yet? Kelly, your answer. I have not. Yeah. Um, I have a little something special planned. 
Um, I want to go in these episodes fresh. I'm not watching any YouTubes. I've got something special planned I'm working on, and there's a reason why I'm going in fresh to it. Because let's just say, Mertz, if you could get into my head while watching the episodes for the first time, is that something you'd be interested in? Um, yes. I, 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 well, I mean, I, Adam, and, Adam and Matt Hoffman told me in Vegas that they were actually there when Ian got to see the first two episodes of the season. And they said that that was literally the best thing that they saw all year. Very cool. Um, hang on. So yes, I do think it would be interesting. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I feel like watching it with you really it would only be interesting when it got down to the final four. You know, like I would love some insight as to the Shane decision because I mean I understand that you know obviously Ian was going to take you and Danielle was going to take you where Shane wasn't going to take you. But I almost feel like you could have manipulated Shane so easily, and I feel like backstabbing him is really ultimately what killed you with the jury. It's a fair assessment. But not really, right? Because they all came out and they said they'd vote for ketchup over you, so it didn't even matter. At least I didn't lose the mustard. But you know what, Mertz? I'm going to tell you something, and I can't tell you any details. Like, Dan, when he came for dinner and we were talking, there was so, mu so much interesting things that he shared with us th from the beginning through that just really, really surprised us. That, you know, we don't see, or we didn't know what was in his head. It was just really, it was like an hour and a half of just nonstop talk. Dan, how about that? How about, interesting. Can, how about, can you share one of those with us, Dan? Like something that might surprise regular viewers? Um, I'm trying to think what my mom's actually referring to. And I don't want to ask her because she'll let any because cats out of the bed. Yeah. Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, um, they asked, like, what's it like being around Will, you know, and I responded, like, Will is always, always on, you know, he's such a dynamic personality, and what you see in his videos that he launches, which are hilarious, by the way, you know, I don't know if he's watching, but if you haven't seen Will's trilogy, I mean, it's, it's right up there with the Star Wars trilogy, but he's always on, and, and it's just, it's, he's always on, it's like watching a, a comedy sitcom every single day, and, you know, people asked if that's how it really was, and it was. I think she was also talking about yeah. Lily. Oh, right oh. On. See, look at Chelsea knew. I didn't know. The brains of the <laughs> Oh, what I said, yeah, here's what I said about Willie is that he's had a lot of endearing qualities. Like he told me a story and I was hooked. He said he grew up, you know, in a family of a bunch of kids and he cut his knee open and his parents could, uh, couldn't afford him to take him to the hospital. On top of that, he had an eighth grade education and this guy got dealt a horrible hand of cards and he played it, you know, and he's fought through his life. And, and I just felt like, you know, people, obviously he, 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 he gave away a golden opportunity, but at the same time, like this dude has had a struggle his entire life. And I felt like had he had maybe, um, you know, how do I put this? If I had the opportunity to coach Willie, like to me, that's, that'd be a lot of fun because it's a challenge. I mean, you got a pit bull. It's a matter of can you get a leash on him? And I thought he would have been a great player. He, he just needed – a little more like iron fist guidance, you know, but I really liked Willie. He's really endearing. And, uh, you know, I just think with the cards he's been dealt with his hand in his life, he's done an awesome job, you know, and it's not easy. It's easy for us to sit back and judge, but, you know, I felt like I got to know him pretty well and, and, you know, he's, he's not a bad guy. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen with this one, but suffice to say, it'll be interesting. Hang on. I'm going to say, apparently he, we've, we've got, it says John Cochran. I, I highly doubt this is John Cochran, but it's gotten my attention. One sec. I don't like that evil look on Mertz's face. Well, I, I don't know if it's John Cochran. Wait, I'm trying to find it again. Because John Cochran is based for those. He's like the uh, he's like the survivor version of Ian Terry, right? Am I am I wrong, Dan? You know what? I, Ian talked about him a lot, but I after Heroes and Villains and Redemption Island and Hans's last season. I st I got I had a couple blank spots in Survivor and like, fans and favorites I didn't see I didn't see uh, I don't know who this guy is I, Ian talked about him and I'm sure I'd like him based on what Ian said but I, I also know he's no Rob Sesternino I'll, I'll put it that way okay okay well how come I never got any shout outs Dan here I am basically salivating at every second when the live feeds are on at 4 a.m. and I'm like you know maybe Dan's gonna throw me one tonight you know maybe maybe it'll be like one for the brown guys tonight 
No. <laughs> Actually, I did. I think just every time I talked about you, they cut the feeds because you didn't sign a waiver. Okay. That would be cool. That would be cool, Kelly, is if you had one of these and I like I passed it to you and you like took it like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then Mertz would have one, and we just continue to pass them. That would be cool. Uh, Dan, you told Danielle many times that Shane wasn't into her. Was that game, or was that your true opinion? Kelly, what do you think about that? You watch the live feeds probably more than I live the game. Oh, brutal question. Um, you know, I think Dan was very eloquent in the way that he told that Danielle that maybe Shane wasn't into her. But, you know, from my perception, it really didn't look like he was. But it looks like post-show, he really is. So, who knows? Mom, you want to chime in on that one? Mm-mm. Okay. Well... I know that in real life, Dan is that brutally honest. Even when it comes to some of my friends and stuff, he'll chime into our girl talk sometimes and be like, listen, this is what's really going on with this guy, blah, blah, blah. So I think that, I don't know, I see that side of him in real life too. Why didn't you send Shane home in your double eviction? Was it because you were uncertain of the move? Yeah, Danielle talked me out of it. I knew I needed her vote to get him out. Um, I only had Jen uh, for sure. She talked me out of it. Obviously, I wasn't happy about it. I have an analogy. Um, I told my mom the analogy about that. Long story short, here's what here's what I let happen. In 2009, to bore you guys, um, St. Mary's was in the state championship game. We're heading into the first half. We're up seven points. There's 10 seconds left. We're on the one-inch line, and as coaches, we have to make a decision. Do we kick the field goal, go up 10 points, go into the half with some momentum, or we, we call a timeout? We call a timeout, the, the kids run over, say, Coach, we got to go for it, we got to go for the touchdown, we got to go for the touchdown. Well, as the coaching staff, the coaching staff saying, kick the field goal, kick the field goal. Ultimately, we listen to the players. The players want to go for the touchdown, we get stuffed, the other team runs off the field, hyped up going into halftime. And I told Danielle this story, and I said, when I listen to you about – um, not putting Shane up. I said, I listened to a player, just like I did in St. Mary's. We lost that game in 2009. I'm not, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm taking control of this game. I'm being the head coach, and I'm running this game the way I need to. So, yeah, she talked me out of it. Um, you know, it would have been great to leave Jen and Joe in the game, but I couldn't – if I put Shane up and he didn't go home, I was in trouble, and I couldn't, couldn't cement Danielle's vote in, in 30 seconds. Um. Dan, have you, uh, have you like, had a chance to sort of, like, go back and think about stuff again? Like, have you sort of, like, sat there at family dinner going, I wish I would have done that. I wish I wouldn't have listened to them. I wish I would have kept Janelle. Or are you not that type of player? Not, you know, for me to get, like I said, for me to get the final two was a dream come true. And had I not done all that stuff, I wouldn't have got there. I guess the only thing I would have liked to have done but probably would have cost me a vote is finish the whole game off of that, that you know, horror movie speech. But... Um, in actuality, I have not played it. I'm very satisfied with how I played the game. I just, I've said this a lot of times. I feel like I can ride off into the Big Brother sunset knowing I have nothing more to prove. You know, I wanted to ask you about your final, uh, I wanted to ask you about your final sort of, uh, jury speech. Why didn't you bring up the fact that, like, you had the hardest road to get there? That you were a returning winner, you shouldn't have been anywhere close to the final two, and you still made it there, even though you had more obstacles than anyone else. Like, I almost feel like it was more of an apology rather than a Napoleon-like ownership of destroying everybody else. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's a, that's a great question. And apparently I had to find out for the first time that my mom despised my speech. But um, the, reason I didn't, the reason I didn't bring up the fact that I had won before and that I played a season before, because I didn't want the jury to take that into effect. I didn't want them to say... Hey, this this guy already won a half million dollars. I'm gonna. I don't want the jury to even consider that into voting. So for me to do that, I said it to myself. If I expect them to not consider it, I can't talk about it. Which you know, obviously, will, had been a miscalculation. And you know, could I go back to that 90 seconds and craft a speech, um, knowing everything, how everything shook out? Yeah, would it have mattered much? Maybe a vote or two, but I don't think it would have changed the game. Which is why I'm not. I'm not disappointed. You know, same thing if I won that HOH. I wasn't taking Danielle with me no matter what. So it wouldn't change the outcome of the game for me. 
Um, Kelly, where do you think Dan's game now stands? I know that you're a big Big Brother fan. Do you rank him above Will, um, lower than Will? Do you feel like Will had more competition because he took on All-Stars, whereas Dan took on new players? Okay, so I'm going to take a step back from the sister role and take a um, Big Brother fan approach to this question and say that um, Dan's pretty much the best Big Brother player in all of history. Um, and you can see that by his epic moves and by taking a look at the statistics. I mean, first Big Brother player to not only win the game, but also um, come in second and never have a vote cast against him. So I think the evidence kind of speaks for itself. She's speaking as a sister, not as a fan. But thank you, Kelly. I appreciate that. But, she, I mean, Kelly knows me. She knows, like, how much I love the game and how much that means to me. And, like, you know... Out of anyone, out of all our family members, Kelly knows the. I feel Kelly knows the game the best, and you know I, I appreciate her saying that a lot. Well, I watched it too almost every season, Dan. Just to FYI. <laughs> who is it? Yeah, but your favorite player was who, Marcel? <laughs> oh. Mom, who's your favorite player? Um, my mom did tell me on the way. My mom told me on the way leaving for Big Brother 14, she goes, you remember what you told me, Mom? You told me one thing. What did you tell me not to do? I told you not to work with Boogie. <laughs> that was my last word to you. Do not, and you know what, really, like, from the very beginning I told you, and when you did that, when you started making, going that way, I was just, like, so upset. Chelsea, my alternative. That's what I told him. Do not work with Boogie. Yeah. But did he listen? You he tried. Listen your mom. Mama knows best. I tried. Mom. That's because you just wanted you just you just wanted to get into Boogie's places, didn't you, Dan? Is that is that exactly. why? Exactly. But you know, at the end of the day, would you? I mean, I don't want to. I'd rather go to Greystone Manor than anywhere else in Hollywood. I'll put it that way. I'm trying to, apparently Cochran is in here, and I can't get this question to go through. Moderators, can we please put this question through, because it's not selecting for me. That's why he's on video, but I, it's not letting me select it. That would be pretty awesome. Wait, hang on, sorry. Talk among yourselves, I'm trying to figure this out. Can I ask a question? Just, just know whatever you're saying, Mom, just know whatever you're about to ask is going to be burned onto the internet forever and, and, and it can never be deleted. But what's up? Depends what the question Okay, is. listen to this. Okay, so day one, okay, Jody leaves. Who was the second person to get evicted? Hello? Okay, so that's what, the second week of the show, right? So the third week of the show, Danielle's up on the block. They could have gotten rid of Dan, Dan and Danielle right there. Where is Dan's month of um, being protected? Dan, I would just like to say that mom steals all my big brother justifications on gameplay, and she just repeats. No, I yeah, came Kelly, I thought, no, I've always said that. Everyone says he has all this protection. Playback, have, let's see the playback from last week. I said it, she stole So it. I would like to know how Dan was protected for a month. It's not real life, Mom. That's why. Okay. Okay, so now Danielle's on the block. Is it week three? Or, okay. So right then and there, Dan, Danielle and Dan could have gone home, right? So basically, Dan was eligible for eviction week three is what it Week comes three, down he should have been out. So where was his, so where was, where was his protection? So why is everyone saying he gets a month? Okay, now let's make him a co-host. Okay, so while you're bringing him back as a co-host, Dan, can we talk about how Ralph Macchio tweeted about you really quick? I mean, to me, Ralph Macchio tweeting me is worth more than a half million dollars. When I, like, people have said, you got to look at Ralph Macchio's Twitter, I'm like, I looked at it, and I dropped my phone. I'm like, Dan holy, squealed. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Squealed like a little girl. Were you rooting for Ian during the season, or were you rooting for Dan? Like, were you rooting for the guy that reminds you of yourself, or were you rooting for the player that was just basically owning everyone? Hey, Mertz. I'm just doing this as a personal favor to you. And because I'm a huge Dan yeah, fan, actually. I was up, supporting man? you the entire time. 
Yeah, you know. Well, you know, first off, John, you know, it's awesome to meet you face to face. Ian raved about you on a nightly basis. Awesome. Um, so I was just I was curious what your thoughts on the jury system for Big Brother are because I thought it's like, it seems like a like a farce like it seems like a formality. You get 90 seconds to talk. Um, everybody has their mind made up. The, all the jurors just seem disinterested. Like Shane was goofing around with the card he got. It doesn't seem like you can make any changes to what the, like the the end result's going to be at the jury time. I thought this should go back to when it was pre-recorded. Get some more time to explain yourself. It's just a formality, right? Right. Well then, John. Okay. Well, sorry, sorry, John. You're 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 actually addressing a lot of the a lot of the questions that people have in the sense where do you feel like it was sort of having a king play against jesters, you know, like, and do you think that that's going to influence how people see Dan? The fact that, like, yeah, he owned people, but he was playing against peons. How's it going? Hey, Mertz. I'm just doing this as a personal favor to you. And because I'm a huge Dan fan, actually, I was supporting you the entire time. You can't hear me? Um, once. Should I, you, all right. But Dan can't hear me. All right. Um, well, okay. I feel horrible now. Did I do something wrong? Should I redo it? Can you hear me? Why do I have to count to oh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Fantastic. Oh, sorry. Hey, can you hear me? Awesome. Um, so I was just I was curious what your thoughts on the jury system for Big Brother are, because I thought it's like, it seems like a, like a farce. Like it seems like a formality. You get 90 seconds to talk. Um, everybody has their mind made up. The, all the jurors just seem disinterested. Like Shane was goofing around with the card he got. It doesn't seem like you can make any changes to what the, like, the, the end result's going to be at the jury time. I thought this would go back to when it was pre-recorded, get some more time to explain yourself. It's just a formality, right? You didn't watch my season. It's not that awesome for you. This is, this is you know... You're... Oh, Bob, I'm just saying, it, it's cool that you came on because I know if Ian's watching this, he's probably like, he's like, why can't I be talking to Cochran right now? But, um... <laughs> Uh, so I heard good things about you, but to answer your question, you know, I guess we talked about it a little earlier, but one cool thing I think might, might that would change the whole thing is I was hoping they'd bring the entire jury into the house for maybe like an hour, and then I can piece off, I can go talk to Frank one-on-one, -on -one. I can go talk to, um, you know, Ashley one-on-one -on -one and, and really see if I can get to him. But, you know, the jury, to compare, because I went through both juries, Obviously, the longer I have to talk with someone, the better off I'm going to do. So I clearly preferred season 10. But in your, in your way, it's kind of like Big Brother, I think, really wanted to go with a live finale. And you, you got to sacrifice a lot to do that. You know? But for you, like someone like you is a, a, a master strategist and you appreciate that, you know, it definitely it didn't help my game. But at the same time, I can't complain about it because I knew that's what I was getting into. What are your thoughts? How would All you right. change it, John? I would just go back to what they had previously, like have, you know, an ex I don't know exactly how it worked logistically, but I guess have some sort of extended question and answer segment instead of this weird, rushed, very generic questions, no opportunity for the juror to really converse with the, with the finalist. I, it seems like a formality to me. Everybody was pissed off at you. You didn't have an opportunity to really, you know, correct your image because they were just, t like, you know, flying through the questions. So, so let me ask you this. Are you... In actuality, are you retracting your tweet that said, I wish I were Ian right now? Because I did see that. <laughs> I, I said I'm jealous of Ian. 
You know? Oh, Not that I wish I were Ian. I'm jealous of Ian in that I feel like, you know, he's in the same mold as me, and he, and he you know, achieved what I wasn't able to do. So that, that was where the jealousy stemmed from. Yeah. That's cool. I, I know. I, that's the first thing I saw. I, I don't want to root for myself because that would suggest some inadequacy on my part that this new and improved version of me can do what I can't do. So I was rooting for Dan the entire time. I thought it was like, a, you know, he was playing on a different level is, is the way I saw it. Um, I understand why Ian won, but... Um, no, I know you're a big Boston Rob, you know, defender, and you don't, that hasn't sullied your, his reputation in your eyes the way he won Redemption Island. I don't think that would be, be it. I think the fact that Dan had a period of immunity at the beginning of the game might make things a little bit goofy, right, as a coach. But you're on the verge of being kicked out of the game because you had lost, I guess, two out of your three players. So, um, your immunity I, was coming to an end pretty quickly. I guess the thing I'd push back on that, and I agree with you, but at the same time, Ian also benefited from that because he his coach won something and saved him for a week that Ian right, didn't do anything yeah. essentially to win. You know, so obviously, you know, Mertz asked me about, you know, finale speeches. What when he when he said that, that would have been an awesome rebuttal had I, you know, used it at the time. But you know. I, I just felt like the okay. target. I think you are, are, are dying to get me kicked off. So I don't want to take up any more time. I know that the the, the geeselings are the star of the show. I just want to say hello. Very cool to meet you, man. Thanks so much for all the kind words. I really appreciate awesome it. Awesome meeting you, too. See you, right. John. Hi. This went off air. There you go. How do I end out of this? Bye, Bye John. John. All right, and I'll just let you... Uh, I'll let you X out, because I can't figure... <laughs> but real quick. Mertz, did you throw your hat in the ring to get in Big Brother Canada? Just to clarify, ever in the chat room. Just to clarify, ever in the chat room, Mertz did not answer that question, so he could be in the running to be in the Big Brother Canada house, but I don't want to ruin his chances by putting him on blast right now. So notice how he didn't answer the question. He said, I tried to host it, but he didn't say he didn't apply to be on the show. He didn't say that he's been texting back and forth with Robin Cast. So just so we know, on what's the date today? Uh, 20... I don't know. Sunday, 30th. September 30th. Mertz tried to duck answering the Big Brother question, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see him in the house. Well, definitely, Mertz, we'll do one, and we'll cut up, we'll cut all the pretty girls out of it, and just me and you, and we'll talk strategy. Um, I think a lot of people were mesmerized by, by how pretty they were, anyways. Oh, my arm. This a little shout out, to, a little shout out to Jeff Schroeder. Oh. You're not allowed to miss. You're not allowed to miss. You can't miss. Frank doesn't like that. Frank doesn't like that. Now you see who the real mister is. <laughs> Frank doesn't like you anymore. Yeah, no, he, he's awesome. He's so cool. I, that's my first chance uh, meeting the guy. Really nice guy. Um, you know, we, I had a fun time with him. Three minutes. I don't wow. have. I don't have any plugs, Mertz. My my book sells itself. <laughs> Ian read it. He got on. Um, Ashley. Ashley read it. She got on. Joe. Joe said he read it. Um, no, honestly, Mertz, I, I'm not here to plug anything. You've been so awesome, you know, the entire time in my family. I really appreciate it. I don't need to talk about how I personally coach people one-on-one -on -one to get on reality TV. I don't need to talk about how I can individually coach people to reach their goals even outside of reality TV. That's not why I'm here. I'm not trying to sell books. Or anything like that. I'm here to really talk about strategy and Big Brother with my family, my wife, and of course you, Mertz. I, I mean, do you think I would take the time to, to just sit here and 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 you know just talk about Big Brother because I want to sell books? No, you know I love Big Brother. I love strategy. But seriously, I'm just joking around, Mertz. You know, people know they can go to DannyGeesling.com and they can shoot me an email and I'll respond to them. You know, if people find value in what I do. Cool, go check it out. I, you know, I wrote a, a letter of gratitude to everyone um, about you know supporting me. I, I I hate the word fan. You and I, Mertz, have talked about it. People that 
support me. They're part of the team. They're not a fan of me. If I saw them in the street, I wouldn't say, oh, you're a fan. I wanted to get to know this person. And, you know, why do you find, why do you connect with me? Because whatever that is, I probably had that same struggle or, or whatever it is. So I really appreciate that support. You know, when I got off uh, the show, Chelsea's like, you're not going to believe what happened on Twitter. You know, like everything grew out of control. I know there's some people that have been following me since the beginning, like Colleen Kelly and, and Andy. And, and there's some people that have been there since the beginning. And now that, you know, I have this massive, you know, Twitter follow, it's, it's so overwhelming that I'll never abuse that trust because I see people come off the show and they start sending out sponsored tweets and ads and trying to sell their crap. You know, if someone finds value or thinks I can help them, cool, that's why I'm there. If you just want to hang out and, and see what me and Frank are up to, that's cool. You know, I, I'm never going to try and push things on people, but if people want to know what I'm up to, they know how to find me. So, I mean, that's just me being completely honest. Yes, The Good Girl Comeback is thegoodgirlcomeback.com, and it's a series of conferences to help girls in middle school and high school with all the things that we all struggled with, confidence, leadership, friendship, all that good stuff. Check it out. It's not The Good Girl Comeback. It's goodgirlcomeback.com. And let's just knock it over one more window to this pretty face right here. She has a, something she can plug, too, but she's more modest about it. <laughs> Michigan Sense. Yes. Uh, yes, Mertz, but uh, while we're talking about it, they're just not any candles. They're all natural and 100% made in the USA. You can check it out at michigansense.com. And... While we're at it, Pro USA, buy a Ford. Can I, and thank you. I have 500 Twitter followers. <laughs> thank you. I had 13 before the season started. <laughs> Mertz is like, this is, you can't write this stuff. Right. So you want me to to, to redo a, a jury speech? I honestly I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, but for just for purposes of the merch show, I'll do it for you. So I stand before you today humble because as a previous winner of this game, I have no idea how any of you let me get this far. You know, people say people say people say that I had a month worth of free life in this game. I'm gonna say I had the exact opposite. Everyone wanted me out from day one, and you know what? I had three weeks, and on the third week, you could have got rid of me, and you didn't. Why is that? Is it because you wanted to work with me? Because you thought you could trust me? Or because you wanted to use me as an asset to your game? Quoting Memphis Garrett, that's exactly why you kept me in this house, because you knew I was dangerous, and I could be dangerous for you. But guess what? Just at the end of the movies that sometimes you go to and you expect a happy ending, Ending, this wasn't your happy ending. This was your worst nightmare because I put a knife in every one of your back except for one person, and that's Ashley. You know, Ashley, you're a sweetheart. I'm just sad I didn't get a chance to stab you in the back because I would have if I had the chance. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I came hard as I possibly could. I, This is my passion in my life. I never attacked anyone personally. I didn't make fun of anyone's weight. I didn't make fun of anyone personally or, or anything like that. I played a straightforward I didn't play a straightforward game. I played a non-personal game. Every move that I made was to move a chess piece forward in the game. It just so happened, you guys weren't queens or kings. You were all pawns in my game. So I, I'll leave you with this final. Give me your vote, because it's checkmate.